I've had a weird start to my day. Um, I found a hat full of money on the street. And I also got chased by a bloke with a guitar. <laughs> um, I did have a job circumcising elephants at the zoo. The pay sucked, but the uh, tips were huge. <laughs> so it, it, it took me a while to get the first one. I've got it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I was in the, uh, so I was in a restaurant the other day and, uh, the waiter came to me and said, are you ready to order, sir? And I said, uh, I'm sorry, uh, can you wait a minute? My wife's in the toilet. Um, and, uh, the, uh, the, what, the, the waiter said, well, what's she having? And I said, well, it's been 10 minutes, so it's probably a shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Black Dog version 2, 177. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. I'm Jim. I'm Elton. And this is the wonderful world of Zencaster. It is. Ooh. So it's about new that new recording software smell. <laughs> it does. All yes. the plastics are still on the seats. Indeed. Um so, yes. Uh, so we are here on a new recording system. So if suddenly everything goes horribly wrong like it did last week, Fox and uh, Clean Feed, um, then obviously apologies in advance. But as ever, we're going to see how everyone's week's been. Then we're going to have a bit of feedback. And then we'll be on to this week's movie, which is your choice, Darren, which was? Uh, the Black Phone. Thank you very much for remembering to be near the microphone for that one. Good work. <laughs> cool. The Black Phone. Yes. So there you go. That's that's what we'll be reviewing. And we shall get on with the show. Oh, God, that sounds pretentious. I don't think I've ever called it the show. <laughs> you God. fucking knob. What a knob. <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. Yeah, that's, oh, my God. I, I actually, I am actually internally cringing right now. That that actually, I, someone else is going to have to take over for a second because that really hurt me when I realized how <laughs> fucking pretentious and stupid that sounded. Seriously, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear! I've become the very thing I hate. I'm yeah. any any minute now. I'm going to be on YouTube with my hat on backwards, going smash that like bell, subscribe. Oh, yeah. shut up and go drink your bubble tea. Go on. <laughs> bubble tea. <laughs> I I heard about this bubble tea. I love bubble tea. <laughs> what the hell is this? I fucking love bubble tea. I'll it's fucking sem. It's semolina in fruit juice for a bunch of. It's Gorgeous! Oh, it's, it's a load of old bollocks. <laughs> is Bubbles... it like the, the equivalent of having your, your food broken down? No, no free chewed. No. <laughs> no, no, it's the equivalent. It's the equivalent of of a fifty year old man coming up in a Tommy Tippy cup, going, mm, "I like the sippy tippy drinky." Mm. <laughs> so, what is? Is it a cup of tea with bubbles in it, or what? No. What is it then? It's a. It's just a fruit juice, it's not and then there's juice. little, and there's a little, and there's little fucking bubbles of plastic semolina that have inflated with the fruit juice. Yeah, and that's it. You get big wide straws, so you can have a drink of your, of your Tommy Tippy cup, and then you chew on the little semolina jazzy oh, balls. God, it's it's the drink equivalent of the air fryer. <laughs> so. <laughs> so where does the tea come into it? Is there tea, or is it just there is tea? You do get fruit juices, but it some of it is made with like you know tea. They get matcha versions, you know that kind matcha. of matcha. Yeah, matcha. Right. You can have that in it, but it does. They do give you different flavors. Mm. I happen to quite like it. Okay. What? What? What's, what's, your fa- my what's your favorite? My favorite. Oh, it's uh. It's the creme brulee with caramel bubbles. Oh, yes. My <laughs> word. You've changed, Aaron. You've changed. <laughs> creme brulee with caramel bubbles. I've not changed at all. It's, I've always wanted tattoos that look like they were drawn on by a two-year-old up my arm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've, I've always been meaning to buy this, this blue and white stripy T-shirt that makes me look like a sailor. Yes. 
Have you, had, you, have you had your tongue yet? pierced recently? Eh? <laughs> have you had your tongue pierced recently? Of course not. But it's on the cards. <laughs> 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 I'm also going to be doing my uh, part-time job as a barista. Um, <laughs> and, and now, and now, if you excuse me, I'm going to finish eating my chips from this shovel that's been artfully placed in the corner <laughs> at the jaunty angle. Indeed. <laughs> Fucking uh, creme brulee with gaze, caramel bubbles. You gaze, gaze my... He actually said those words. <laughs> they so were. Those words. They came out of my <laughs> fucking mouth. Yes. So there you go. And uh, and I was internally cringing over calling this podcast a show in in a, in some kind of professional manner. Oh my god, you've changed, Al. You've I changed. You called it a podcast, mate. You've you've already gone by the wayside there, Lee. It, what would I know, call it? Used, it? Well, you just like you know recording, isn't it? Recording off the internet. That's what we used to call it, Lee. And now you've gone all posh unless you call it a podcast. <laughs> What's all that about? Hey, eh? what's happened to you? Well, you're like Dominic. What have you West done with my friend? Fucking... I want him back again. I want the, I want the old Lee back. You're far too fucking posh. <laughs> it says Mr. Fucking Creme Brulee Caramel Bubbles. Would you like some foamy double soap latte on top of that, you big... That's, oh, that's we've got back man. to the 70s now, have we? Right. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the last time I heard anybody say something like that, Dickie Davis was on fucking television presenting me- fucking monk slapping on World of Sport on ITV. <laughs> monk slapping. Monk yeah, slapping. slapping, yeah. In the days when euphemism. The Big Daddy's, a Big Daddy <laughs> smash you, was a wrestling move and not a euphemism for something else. <laughs> Big, da- Big Daddy Splash is what you pay for at Old Compton Street now. 50 quid for an hour, I think. <laughs> oh, God. We well, have it, the Big Daddy Splash, you know what I mean? With, with me caramel bubbles. With me caramel bubbles. <laughs> Anybody want to suck on my caramel bubbles? I'll tell you what, any more, and I'll have a word with Mick McManus, and I'll have him over here. Kendo second... Uh, uh, Nagasaki. Kendo, whatever his Nagasaki. name is. Nagasaki. Nagasaki. I'll tell you what, they will be all over you. They really will. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Roll a ball Rocco as well. I'll get him down here. <laughs> Giant eight stacks. Giant eight stacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> well, now that we've dis- devolved to 70s playground... <laughs> Tactics. I'm off to watch Love Thy Neighbour. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm not. No, switch it off. Switch it I'm, off. I'm off to watch. I'm off to watch Please, Sir, with John Alderton being molested by a bunch of teenage girls. Uh, hey. Mind your, mind your, mind your language. That one. We'll, we'll oh, have that Lord. as well. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you That's go. That's it. Yeah. Oh well. <sighs> anyway, let's find out how everyone's week's been. <laughs> Yeah, it stopped being a show. It stopped being a podcast. It's gone back to the usual rambling old yep. bollocks that we've all been used to for the last twenty years. Indeed, right? Okay. So many, so many deep cuts. So many deep cuts. I think yeah. we found a new vein of oil. Um, <laughs> that's how deep those cuts were. Yes. Go on in. So, so while so while Darren chews on these caramel caramel semolina <laughs> toss balls, um, Jim, do you want to tell us how your week's been, mate? Uh, relatively quiet, really. Mm. Um, uh, generally, uh, spending as little time in this reality as possible currently. Yes, <laughs> which seems the wisest course of. <laughs> Very much so. Still enjoying Dead Island too, as it's sunny mm. there, and I get to kill mm. things. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So I'm uh, re- really, really enjoying that game. That's tremendous fun. Mm-hmm. And then, so I've, I've wasted far too much time not doing anything more constructive than holding my flying drop kick to kill zombies instantly, <laughs> which is pretty damn good. Nice. <laughs> you literally can kick their heads right off now. I'm very so proud gone, of that. <laughs> <laughs> you've gone full Chuck Norris. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. Nice. And so lots of fun with that. And then, um, Basically, just really remembering why I dislike summer in this country. Mm-hmm. We have the all the joys of um, too much sunlight, like getting light at four in the morning. Mm-hmm. It means increasingly, my, my dog is waking up, wants to be out because it's light. I want to go. 
It's like, oh, oh God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but not getting the weather to compensate for it. Mm. And not yeah. to mention, the other thing I always forget with the summer that always was, always puts a damper in it. It just really brings out the fucking cock ends in the world. <laughs> I mean, it's right. a lovely afternoon. You think, I think I'll go have a nice, you know, sit here in our back garden, relax. But no, mm. someone down the street just bought a jet washer. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great. And this is worth, worth, worth you mentioning. I, I mean, I heard him. So he ruined one afternoon. Mm. The, the following, following day, it was actually raining. And we were out with the dog. And uh, we were passing the street railing. I couldn't help but notice. It was in the middle of the rain, he was jet washing his front courtyard yeah. in the rain. Okay. It's in the rain. Right. This, you love this wow. jet washer far too much. Wow. And nice. then um, the other day when we went down that street, I noticed he'd not just jet washed his front courtyard, he'd actually done all the pavement outside his house. Oh, <laughs> so the pavement, this is something that's like, pavement's like, you know, pavement color, pavement color, so it's like bright white, pavement color, pavement color. And it's kind of, I'm glad I don't live in his house because that jet washer is getting used for everything. Yes. Is, I'll get the jet washer. Can you put it? <laughs> can you wash the dog? I'll get the jet washer. Can you yep. put up this picture? I'll get the jet washer. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what you say about him doing that in the rain sounds like one of those exhibit memes. Hey, dude, I heard you like water. So I put water in your water. So you get a water with your water. <laughs> I agree. Why are you jet washing in the rain, you fucking tosser? I know. I know you've probably got gadgets. It's the highlight of your day you've got this damn thing. But honestly, hmm. give it up. It's a pretty summer. It's not worth it. It really isn't. As long as it isn't. As long as it isn't like he's turning it into a TikTok sensation. So he's going to have deep, uh, um, mildly satisfying road clearance and all that kind of <laughs> shit. You know, seeing those people who suddenly realise what a strimmer's for and they go along. Yeah. Go along and sort of do the edging of a someone's someone's house for no discernible reason other than just to go, hey, look, we did this and put it on TikTok. Because <laughs> that, that, that'll that be the next thing. You'll have him ro- rolling up to your front door going, do you want me to uh, do the uh, front step on your, <laughs> your house? It's like, fuck it. <laughs> and as long as I can film it on TikTok and make myself look great. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh, God. Yeah. Anyway. But mm. yeah, so that's a... I just got to be careful. I want to be out being annoyed by uh, these idiots who keep, like ruining the summer with large power tools. But remember, mm. I'm not actually in Dead Island too, and it's not <laughs> for me to go and kick their heads off. <laughs> no matter how good it is, I think I am. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I found, as I found to my, uh, as I found to my own personal cost, uh, you can't, you can't emulate your video game heroes as I try to do an Assassin's Creed jump off the top of the, um, <laughs> off the top of Big Ben Tower. It just doesn't work. Yeah. No. Can somebody anyway. smell almonds? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try the other leg now. I got a bandaid. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Cool. Anything else, sir? Uh, no, I think I'll leave that there. I no, think okay. It's relevant, so nah, that's fine. That's cool. No problems at all. So we'll move on to you, then, Elton. Anything been happening around your way, sir? Uh, the only exciting thing happened today when a pigeon walked into our conservatory. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the most. That's the most middle class. Th- that's almost. That's almost up there with. Welcome to the show, and here's my caramel, caramel uh, Samalina balls. In the conservatory, we had a pigeon come in to tea. The, the, the conservatory is situated in the West Wing. Oh, so, my yes. God. <laughs> <laughs> there is an East Wing and a West Wing to this house, and the conservatory is oh, in the West Wing. Your West Wing. <laughs> no, no, it is not. <laughs> making, making a speech to the American public. <laughs> well, it's okay. He's got a pigeon in there, so he's got two wings oh, right. now. <laughs> ah, hmm. Here all week, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, yeah go on. That was fun. So uh, I, I, I heard a little ruckus downstairs, and it's like, okay, right, I go downstairs, and was told that there was a, a pigeon in in the con- conservatory, mm. and uh, walked in there. Yes, there, there was one there. So got got a blanket and tried to 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 grab him in the, and uh, yeah, just they they fly so. Couldn't catch him or anything like that. He flew up. Weirdly enough, the dog jumped outside and started barking at him through the window <laughs> from the outside. You don't, oh, okay. 
he, do, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get involved in that. No, shit. no. Like, pigeons are handy, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, he, he ended up smacking his head on the on, on the ceiling a couple of times, and then <laughs> fell to the floor. Not not the dog, the pigeon, and. Oh, right. uh, and and then found his way out through the door again. So that's about as exciting as it gets around here at the moment. Uh, okay. Yeah. R- right. Well, there you go. Okay. Pigeons in the conservatory. Well, yeah. Right. So uh, over to Captain Creme Brulee and uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's what's happening with your world, sir? <laughs> with, with, are, are you referring to me, sir? Are you referring yes. to me? Yes. Yes. If uh, If you can hear me over your Hoxton bonnet. Well, I've just hold. <laughs> could you give me two seconds while I put this very small shopping trolley I've just eaten my chips out of just over by the. Uh, over I, by knew the yeah. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. Do I'll, you want to rearrange? This. You want to rearrange your uh, hand knitted yak yak wool um, beanie as well while you're at um, it? Uh, what? That's that's ridiculous. No, no. <laughs> it's llama. <laughs> I'm I'm wearing a small tire from a 1970s. Uh, Unicycle. <laughs> Unicycle. <laughs> On my head. At the moment. <laughs> Nitty beanie. Jesus Christ, man. You're so yesterday. <laughs> um, let's see. What did, I, what did I do this week? Uh, not not very much. Um, mm-hmm. I did done finish watching uh, Superman and Lois season three, I think it is. Mm-hmm. The latest one I've got on BBC iPlayer. Mm-hmm. Um now, I know it's a CW show about superheroes, and they all mm. kind of run the same way. But this one, I don't know, it's just a little bit different. It's actually really good. What's a mm. CW, sorry? Um, uh, I, sorry, they got a new I think Country I think Western. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, no. bad man, you come for a hold down. <laughs> Just leave it at that. I don't need to know now. <laughs> anyway, go on. Don't don't tell him. Nobody tell him. Go on, Dal. So you watching it? Yeah, watching it. Um, <laughs> I, I I've got. I, I have to wonder how shows like The Flash got so many seasons when this one it's ending season four. Um, yeah. It's it's such a sh- it, it's one of the best Superman TV shows I think personally they've had on TV. It's not the best. Mm, right. um, yeah, it's got a little bit of an edge to it. Not so much that it makes it fucking Batman or anything like that, but it's I don't know. There's just something about this show I really I really love. Mm. Um, the guy who plays um, Superman, Tyler Hoshin, I think mm. his name is. Um, he's really good in the role. A uh, very believable Clark Kent as well, mm. um, and I, uh, yeah, just all round the cast is really really great in it. Um, some of the actual the, the bad guys as well that they feature, sort of like from time to time, are done really well. Mm. Um, they even do their version of Bizarro, which they put a nice little spin on that. For anybody who doesn't know who Bizarro is, it's an alternate universe version of Superman where everything is backwards. So it's like he's got heat breath and cold vision, whereas Superman's got heat vision and cold breath. <laughs> um, his planet, is, well, Bizarro's planet, is square, whereas Superman's, you know, Earth is round in our universe. Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, quite, quite unnerving the way they've actually created him as well, the way he looks. Mm. So, um, yeah, really, really sorry to see that go. I wish they'd, we'd actually got a couple more seasons out of that, but right. next season is going to be the last one. Oh, I'm no. I'm so upset. So, um, oh, no. <clears throat> yeah, there's not enough good superhero stuff on TV at the moment. So, um, mm. yeah, it's a it's a real shame that that's going. But there you go. Um, let's see what else we do. Uh, I took the plunge and got myself a copy of Cyberpunk 2077. Because I've heard now that with all the updates and the improvements they've done mm-hmm. to it, it's actually a really, it's actually a really decent game now. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I played it when it first came out, and it wasn't brilliant, it wasn't brilliant no. at all. But now, um, mm-hmm. this is how it should have been when they first released it, or as yeah. damn it, it's it's actually really good. It's only taken them four years to do yeah. that. 
<laughs> I noticed there's a few games that have done that. Uh, was it? There was No Man's Sky. Oh, yeah. As well. Um, mm. And the guys who developed it felt so bad uh, about deceiving mm. the public that they just updated it for free. Everything that's come out for No Man's Sky has been completely free. All the DLC, everything. There's just been a new update as well called yeah. um, called Dead Universe or something. Yep. And it's literally you're the only person in the entire universe, but everything's been abandoned. Yeah. Which yeah, sounds it's... quite creepy and interesting. What's that? Oh, Sorry? It it's called um, No Man's Sky. Oh, it... No Man's Sky. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> it's it's really well done, that game. Um, it's all procedurally generated on different planets. Um, so you never really get two planets are exactly alike I've, I mean they do sometimes follow a bit of a pattern mm. but um, yeah I've got to say you can definitely get some mileage out of that game and it's got replayable now you can mode. yeah now you can and it's yeah. got you know <laughs> replayability in there as well so um, six years ago you wouldn't have done though <laughs> no 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 not at all not at all but like I say you know fair dues um, they've done their work on it They've um they've given away all the extras for free, so you know more power to them. Mm. Uh, just don't do it again. Let that be a lesson to you. Okay. Uh, let's see what else happened to me this week. Um, not much else. Oh, um, I got I got hassle from mm. someone on a mobility scooter <coughs> this week. <laughs> right, I'm. Walking along this road now. Darren wait, Diamond from, fan? No, I don't know. No, well, it could <laughs> Darren be Darren Diamond. She was. She, she must have been about seventy or eighty. This Darren woman. Diamond fan, definitely. Definitely. Right. <laughs> she threw your her sonatogen at you. I, I, well, almost. <laughs> almost. Right. Was it a? Was it a? Was it a whirlwind romance? A blur of wintergreen and uh, deep heat and it, kind of like that. <laughs> kind of, sort of. Um, anyway, on on Saturday, I'm walking home mm. from uh from Weybridge station mm. and uh on the way there is a there's a canal that you can walk by right it's got a, a road by it and the pavement isn't exactly super wide or anything like that it's quite you know it's really quite thin in places mm. so i start walking along this road minding my own business i've got my earphones in right and i'm looking behind me i'm about a quarter of the way down this road, look behind me to see if anybody's coming up. Nothing, right? The place is <laughs> deserted, right? So yeah. I'm walking along. So I'm like, and I mean, I go a fair clip. I walk faster than most people do, and I'm going <laughs> along this than road. The average bear, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> I should have heard that. You know that music they play with Hell's Angels on movies, <laughs> where they and then you see the front wheel of the bike, and slowly the rest of them pans in. I should have had that. I should have detected that playing, right? Because as I'm walking along, minding my own business, enjoying the music and the sunshine and stuff like this, I turn to look at the canal, and then I notice something out the corner of my eye, a shape. And I turn round, and there's this little old lady on this mobility scooter, (laughs) right? Right up my arse, literally. So I take the earphone out, and I, I go to move aside, and I just get this torrent of fucking abuse from this person. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, like ah, did, oh, I couldn't understand most of the words she said, but I understood all the swearing. Mm. I think Being she called me. I think she called me a cunt at one point as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure, but I let her go by. I'm just creme stood brulee. There. She yeah. was saying creme brulee. Creme brulee. Creme brulee. <laughs> Cri- you creme brulee drinking cunt. And then she, she drove on by. Okay. Yeah. And then she'd go, and I could see her looking in her rear view mirror at me, continuing to swear. And she just sped off. She, it's like, exactly. She's on the pavement. She's riding. Like, I don't know. She, she must have been doing about 20, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> she's, fucking, she's having a go at me. Apparently, right, even though she's the one, Fucking doing the the fucking uh, Top Gear test drive, Clarkson style, on a pavement. <laughs> I'm, I'm the cunt, because I'm the one walking. Anyway, oh. she drove off, right? She's obviously very impatient. Drove round me, sped off down a road. Then she came to a, a halt 
mm-hmm. lit up a cigarette and then fucked off again. And it's like, I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. <laughs> it was like Jewel. Yeah. Were you... <laughs> <laughs> just sort of every, every everywhere you turn, she suddenly come out from us turning. I thought, I thought, do oh, I, I miss the bean? <laughs> do I give her a bit of a start and chase her up the road, fucking Robert Pattinson <laughs> style, mm. in the Terminator? Yeah, <laughs> it's like no, 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 Darren, no, <laughs> no, just, 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 just fucking let her go. <laughs> Honestly, it was just I could, I just stood there. Like, what the fuck have I just <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Furiosa on a motor. Does she have black ink across her face? <laughs> Frailty Road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah I, I, I just heard us, I, I, I just hear her swearing and looking back at me in the mirror, in the rear view mirror. Mm. Fucking all, just hurling abuse over her shoulder at me as well, and all you can and all you can hear is she drove past the, the roar of the engine. Yep, she had like silver sprayed across her lips and everything like this. She's like, "Witness me! <laughs> what a beautiful day! What Radio a beautiful God. day!" <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I almost got I almost got uh, fucking driven Ram off right. pavement by Immortan Josephine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, God. Mad Max never had to yeah. with this shit. <laughs> was it? Was 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 there a guitarist with like flames jetting out of his guitar, Actually, on, riding yes, on, he the was stood on the back? On the back, yes, he was. <laughs> 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 yeah, they call him the Doof Rider or something like that. I think the official name is for that character. Well, that sounds like a euphemism if ever there was one. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, Get your yeah. Doof Rider out. There you go, Immortan Josephine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, but there you go. So uh, apart it. from that, um, nothing else, actually. Okay, fair enough. Oh, pardon me. Well, um, my week, um, I'll just do the films I saw, start with. I watched The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Oh, I want to see oh, that. All right. Did you go to the cinema? I did. I went very clearly to the <laughs> cinema to, 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 see see a, to see a film. It was a preview screening because it hasn't been released in the UK. So luckily I had a pre-screening view. Pre-screening? <laughs> was it one of those special City World tickets? It was. It was a mysterious City World ticket that allowed me to see the film early. Honest, Gov. Yes. You believe it? Yes, yes, Did that's exactly Mr. it. Mr. Chubbly Water, you went to the cinema this week. Well, funny enough, it's f- the way you speak <laughs> is is exactly how pretty much the entire cast speak. You've got you've got Alan Richardson who was in Reacher, yeah, as as a Swedish as a Swedish knife man, right? <laughs> you've got you've got Henry Cavill as this kind of insane major who just keeps nicking everyone's coats, and then you've got two other guys. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all on a boat and the, the film is literally just 90% of it it's them on a boat <laughs> going to this going to this port to go and sink a sink a boat full of um supplies for the U-boats so they're and... on a boat to sink a boat that was supplying the U-boats that's right. Yeah. Yep. So it should okay. have been called it should have just been called Boaty McBoat Boat Boat. <laughs> I'm on a place. boat. I'm on a boat. Yeah, there's, and and the thing is, it's kind of like Guy Ritchie does in Glorious Bastards. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of weird air of being a little bit kind of hyper real. But everyone speaks like this. It's like, hey, you, you've got to come in because if you come in, you've been doing an operation behind enemy lines, which was not authorized. Well, actually, I'm very sorry, Chipper, but we've got to go because old Stinky over there has got to go stab up some ton, you know, and, uh, you know, the boat won't sink itself. So tatty bye. And everyone's like that. And you're thinking, OK, everyone's leaning into this and to watch, watch like Alan Richardson. 
who's like the size of a brick shit house, going, Yes, I am Sven. I am from Sweden. You're just thinking, who, 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 who? What the fuck am I watching? <laughs> it's it's yes. Do you think we're going to stab everyone? I would like very much to stab everyone and take their hearts and keep them as trophies, yes? It's like what accent is that? Where where exactly where exactly in I think my Swedish <laughs> accent is a little bit over there. Where exactly from the Muppet Show did you come? <laughs> I'm mean, chef. Meanwhile there's there's two agents at the dock where the boats are currently held um uh, the 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 nazi boats are currently held and they are trying to lay the pl- lay the groundwork before the the unsanctioned attack on these you on this boat happens so you've got this female um, operative who's who's sassy and she's you know cool and she she's she's just as she's just as hardcore with guns and all this kind of stuff and it's like right fine but she never shoots a gun. I mean, she's only shown that she can shoot guns, but only once does she actually shoot a gun. You know, there's all this whole thing of look, look how good she is, and she's shooting bottles from like fifty yards away, and a hundred yards away, and two hundred yards away. And there's her co-agent guy who's sort of he's like um, Rick from Casablanca. He kind of owns a casino, but to keep all the Nazis happy. But actually, he's working with the with the British. And um Yeah. The whole thing the whole thing is kind of like on one side of it, it's really kind of interesting and fun and a bit upbeat and it's a bit sort of it's Guy Ritchie from from Man from Uncle rather than Guy Ritchie from ah. Snatch. Right. But okay. the action but the action is really weird because these guys in this unit are so utterly ruthless and efficient. That it never ever turns into a gunfight, and when it does, they get on like big fucking chain guns and just go. <laughs> and just, it, it just it never seems like it never seems like they're ever in danger. It's like he's like, oh Sven, would you mind uh, saving us a little bit of effort and taking the guys out from the tower? And he goes yes, and he gets a bow and arrow and he goes, Choo! and it's like Legolas and like twenty thousand miles away, you just see a guy go. Eh. <laughs> just fall off, fall off, fall off a tower, and it's just like, oh, okay. And everyone's just kind of ambling about, and you know, Henry Cavill's nicked someone else's coat and a and a hat, and he's wearing it at a jaunty <laughs> angle, and he's just strutting about. And he's going, oh, uh, Blinky, would you mind uh, taking care, awfully taking care of these two chaps at the uh, ta- at the tank? Yes, no problem, sir. Pow, pow. Anyway, carry on. So now, where are we going to go to the fuel tank? Oh, well, it's over there. Right, okay, there's four chaps there. This could be a little difficult. No, no, it's okay, sir. I can get them from here. <laughs> okay, carry on. And they're just walking around. Every fight is just them walking around. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's just like... It's like someone described that there was a fight. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody could be bothered to film a fight. They just kind of wander around, just go, <laughs> oh, they're all dead. And nobody hears anything because they've all got silences. And it's just like, oh. And then they, they're they they're going to do something with the boat. And it's like, oh, right, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> that kind of sums it up. I just kind of, I came away thinking, yeah, that was a thing. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> I, I didn't hate it. I just didn't love it i was expecting to have a lot of fun with it but hmm. i just kind of sat there laughing at it for most of it it's it's okay it's fine yeah i've yeah. seen the trailer a couple of times and i do want to see it i would the like trailer the trailer makes it seem more like inglorious bastards than the yeah. film actually is well i shall have to get myself along to the cinema well, I'm it. sure I can swing it with a couple of my people in the know at Amazon, oh. who obviously, who obviously are giving out pre-screening tickets. Of course they are. Yes, of course they are. That's where you and go so to I, your pre-screening I, tickets. I will see you and sort you out with a pre-screening ticket, gentlemen. Thank and you. And you can all go to the screening rooms and see the film at the screening room. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. Dan. 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 
Oh, it's Rosen. not that. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie, the porn's gone off my telly. Anyway, right. Oh, nope, I've got an odor in my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I watched was was a film, another film which showed you what it was going to be like in the trailer, and you thought, oh, it's going to be one thing. And it turned out to be something entirely different, which was Wicked Little Letters. <gasps> oh, I wanted to see that. Yeah, now that's on Amazon's um, home cinema screening, and right. the ticket the ticket price for that has come down from like fifteen quid for cinema releases down to four pounds. Oh, cool! Um, and the 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 trailer makes it look like a sort of like post World War One, you know, carry on whoops a daisy, everyone's swearing, all in it looks a lordy governor in it, a bit of a laugh. Oh, tee hee, Olivia Coleman's did said bum willy cunt cunt. And it's all that sort of thing. As you do. As you do. <laughs> oh, look, there's there's Jessie Buckley wearing almost next to nothing, showing her ass to the uh, coppers as she runs down the street. And everyone's going, oh, isn't that? Ooh. And, you know, you're just expecting a swanny whistle. You're all, <laughs> and, and then James to sort of come out and <laughs> give it some of that. <laughs> but actually, what it actually is is this kind of weird Sunday... It feels like a Sunday afternoon, Sunday tea time, Midsummer Murders-style drama with a mystery at the heart of it of who's sending letters. Because basically it's about this town, and it's supposedly a, a, a true story, but it's a town where there's a very prim and proper and put-upon sort of God-fearing, but she's kind of really bottled-up lady played by Olivia Coleman. And then there's right next door is the wild child, oh she's living in sin kind of um Irish firebrand, you know, walks around without shoes on, has a kid. Oh, a kid with, shocking. Yeah. yeah, well it is. No, but that's the whole point. It's totally like, you know, that. It's that kind of thing of like of I don't know, how can I put it? It's like it's like, oh God, women should know their place kind of thing. She's the sort of person who drinks her bubble tea without bubbles or tea. Well, ex- exactly. Well, actually, at one point you see her and she's in the pub and she's the only woman in the pub with a bunch of coal coal miners and she's showing off a trick where she can throw a dart into an apple on top of a guy's head and it, right. and then the policeman comes in and goes, excuse me, it's after nine and you should be at home sort of thing. And that's the thing. It's that kind of drama of these two totally opposite women. They live side by side, and all of a sudden, because one's kind of wild and fiery and the other one's kind of buttoned up and prudish, Mm -hmm. the prudish one's father, played by Timothy Spall, has got the complete, like, women should know their place. They should be over here. They should do this. And all of a sudden, he takes right against Jesse Buckley, and the next thing you know, child services have been called, and then five minutes later... Mm -hmm these letters start appearing really foul comically foul you know letters come aimed at olivia coleman and everyone just instantly assumes it's jesse buckley and you know as as jesse buckley's character says why would i write letters to tell her she's a smelly old fat fanny ass and a and a, and a slut cum whore who needs tit, who needs a good tit wank from a fox when I can actually stand in front of her and say it because I'm living right next door. But because every, the whole village is taken against her, they all believe it's her and she ends up in sort of in jail. And so it becomes a drama with the only policewoman in the village believing Jessie Buckley's story that she's true, you know, that she's not the one writing the letters, while these letters continue to get more and more vivid and come to Olivia Coleman. And then start to spread out amongst the town. So, you know, judges, policemen, the local grocer, everyone starts getting these letters. And and this one policewoman is trying to clear Jesse Buckley's name. And it's got some funny bits in it, for sure, and it has some good moments. But if you watch the trailer, you'd think it was a laugh-a-minute kind of, you know, whoops-daisy, whoops, where my trousers are falling down, sort of baldy... Yeah. sort of sex comedy with lots of swearing but it's not it's nothing like that but it is quite a good film i enjoyed it 
but it is one of those films which is more about the drama and the you know sort of like you know this is how things were rather than rather than sort of like trying to make you laugh at all the swearing bum tilly wit bum things and um yeah but it was quite good i quite enjoyed it it's well worth a look if you if you're up for a for a, for a, shall we say a um it it would be without the swearing it would be a sunday afternoon tea time you know sort of itv drama series with you know lots of lots of well well dressed you know co- costumers from you know pulling out all the stops to sort of recreate post world war 1 yeah village you know it's it's all very it's all very sort of you know very bbc drama kind of thing and then all of a sudden there's jesse buckley standing there in barefoot and then kind of having it away with some bloke that she's sort of been staying with and you can hit you can and then you know that because the walls are so thin that you've got Livia Coleman on the other side and the the cross against her wall is going domph 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 <laughs> So, you know, there's, there's lots of that kind of humour, but then it goes kind of serious and it kind of swerves backwards and forwards. So imagine Vicar of Dibley, but with a lot more swearing. Right. It's that kind of level. It's weird. <laughs> it's a very weird film tonally, but well worth a look. And now, because I've had two people mention it, just just on the off chance, they would like me to do this. And I will do this. Because it's a tradition. That was the end of my week, by the way. Okay. One one little tradition from, from way back. Way back. 2009. <laughs> <clears throat> Alien Romulus news now. <laughs> because, because, you know, 2009, it was Prometheus news now. So there you go. So we got a little bit of time before yeah. the feedback. Trailer came out. Trailer dropped. Poster came out. Post um, and it was poster, poster first. By, Do the poster first. Poster first. first. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the poster came out. Firstly, has everyone seen the poster? Um, yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. So the poster came out. Industrial Light and Magic pushed out their first poster, and I don't know about you, but my brain just went, "Something's wrong with that poster. I can't work out what it is, but my brain is just rejecting it." And then it clicked on me. And I don't know if you, you guys agreed with it or what, because, but I'll just say this. It was on the Facebook group. I put it on the Facebook group. The face hugger is attached to the person's head. The hand, the, the fingers aren't reaching around the back of the head. And that may, may seem like an odd thing to notice. But the fact of the matter is the actual fingers are actually angled as if they are gripping hold of the head. And the head continues on by another. What would you say? <laughs> probably about, in re- <laughs> probably about about an extra sort of six to eight inches off the back of the head. Wouldn't you say that the fingers don't disappear into hair either? Do they? No. So it's very clear that they're kind of they are they they have ta- what they've done is they've taken a face hugger grabbing onto a head. They've taken that and then they've put it onto the face of someone else. But the face of someone else has been photographed a lot closer, and rather than scale up the face I get to fit, or changing the fingers to fit, they've just plonked it on top. So the fingers don't. So the fingers kind of seem to go round into the middle of nowhere or into the side of the head. That was point one, and I was like, God, that, that's what it is. That's what's annoying me. But then something else annoyed me as well. The tail is seen to go over the right shoulder, and the right hand of the person being attacked is grabbing that tail. The -hmm. left hand is up and grabbing something. What is it grabbing? Because the tail goes round to the right, over the right shoulder, and is being held by the right hand. So what is the left hand grabbing? Hope. (laughs) America. (laughs) <laughs> the three-legged dog is America. <laughs> so I decided. So I, so I decided while my computer was backing up to fix it, and I did. I did dumb fix it and put it on the Facebook group. All I did was shave the back of the person's head off, which has been artificially extended, 
by by some piss poor fucking scale brushing. That is pretty uh, bad. And and took the other hand out. And it seems to have fixed the problem entirely. D- agree or disagree, chaps? <laughs> no, your post looks far better. Yeah, yours does. <laughs> yeah, you do need to move the ear, as you said. But yeah, yeah, I need to move the ear. I might do that. I might do that as a th- another pass while my computer continues yeah. to back up. It looks like but two you... fingers have molded into one, though. Yeah, it looks it. There's there's something still very wrong with it. I don't know yeah. what it is. Maybe it's the oh, I've just seen it. I've literally just seen it. I'm looking at the poster now. If you look at the poster now, chaps, mm-hmm. yeah. look at the hand. Yeah. Which hand? The, on my one. It doesn't matter. My one. The one that's well, the, the, the knuckle, hand that's remaining. Yeah. really raised knuckle. There's a really raised knuckle. But yeah. not only that, see the, the tendon down the middle of the arm? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't lie. There's up. a bobble. No, it's not that. It's a bobble. It's an actual wrist. It's a wrist bone. That is the is a hand photograph from the side merged into a hand from the front. That's what it is. There's two hands merged into that picture. Why can't into that they hand. just take a photo? Because they haven't done hey, they that shot. Use, why do that when you can use AI? Yeah. Well, I think actually they might have done looking at that because because the hand the hand grabbing the tail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all right up until the raised knuckle. But then every bit of the hand afterwards is a, a different angle lined up with the mm. wrist bone in the middle of the wrist. Well, at least it's only got four fingers and one thumb on that hand. <laughs> AI's really come along well. Oh, so, um, yeah. Oh, and the uh, tail is hand drawn as well. So there you go. <laughs> and also, uh, see, the distance for the the ear is so mm. far back you'd think the eye would be underneath one of them the mm-hmm. second finger yep where clearly the face hugger hugs the face not mm-hmm. partially hugs the face mm-hmm. it's not a partial it's, it's, hu- face hugger it's like off center the positioning in it yeah 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 also well, the, again... comp- the position on the original it just the back of the head is too close to the to the left side, which as an artist yeah. is kind of that. Yeah, that's my my eye twitching. It's got no, yeah. no, no. You got to move that over. That's got to have space to let the image breathe. I'm too near the edge. Yeah, you're starting to talk about negative space, Jim. Back away, back away from the negative <laughs> you know space I mean? conversation. It's just that kind of yeah. that design in me. Sorry. Mm. Stop. 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 Yeah, move that. Move. Yeah. So yeah, so the tails, so the tails drawn on. The the ear has been moved. I mean, if I move the ear, hope up, is being clutched. <laughs> yeah, hope is being clutched. The fingers are digging into the side of a head that doesn't exist, and the head themselves. The, the person's got elephant man, elephantitis, yeah. or whatever the fuck it's called. So yeah, I'm going to fix the ear. That'll be my thing. I'll do tomorrow. I'll fix the ear because that's the because uh, once if I move the ear up underneath the finger, yeah, then the face makes more sense. Because then it'll be the cheek that's between the third and fourth digits. Well, that sends the whole face around a little bit more as well, doesn't it? Mm. Which that's right. might line everything. You'd have to move the hairline as well. Mm. Oh, yeah, I can do that. That's no problem. So so then my next plan is to post it back underneath the Industrial Light and Magic poster. Yep. <laughs> that, will be my, that will be my final manoeuvre. And that will be when I can s- confirm that I am never working in visual effects industry ever again. Can you uh, can you fix the Adam's apple that seems to be at the side of the neck as well, um, just where the sack <laughs> of the face hugger is yeah. resting upon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because the neck. It's weird because that's a lady. Yeah, I know it's a lady, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now the other thing, obviously, Romulus news. Now the trailer came out. Have we all seen the trailer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, once. Yes. Once. What do we think? How are we feeling about it? Um, it looks promising, but we, mm. you know, that's about it, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is why I didn't do the news. Uh, this is why I've dumped the news segment. <laughs> what do you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a trailer. <laughs> uh, there are some people in it who are doing some things. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, there's aliens in it. Um, there's some face yeah. huggers in it. Mm. Um, and 
get by. I thought it looked all right. But yeah. we'll see, wouldn't we? I mean, it's a good job I've got that cinema card because I can go and see this shit without really feeling as though I've paid for it. Hmm. I mean, well, it's cinema equidistant. Hmm. <laughs> cinema equidistant. Well, actually, funny enough, cinema equidistant gets mentioned in this week's feedback. <laughs> um, okay. Elton, have you got anything you want to add to the, to the conversation about the trailer? I don't want to be too negative about it. It doesn't matter. They put it out. They expect you to to view it, and make your decision based on a trailer. It's advertising. Yeah, it's it's nothing we haven't seen before. Mm. I I don't, I don't know. I've <laughs> I, yeah. I I really I I love Alien so much. And mm. it's so far away from what I actually want to see anymore. So mm. I'm just okay. I'll I'll go watch it. Mm. And if it's if I enjoy it, then great. If I don't, then I haven't lost anything. Mm. Keep your le- keep your expectations level. Is that what you're saying? I I'm trying to yeah because. Mm. God, I sound such a fucking moany old bastard. But no, it's okay. Don't worry. I've been pretentious calling it a show. Jim's Jim's off at, sort of trying to get uh, get sort of jet washed. <laughs> Darren's Darren's <laughs> chewing Darren's chewing on caramel salty balls. I mean, you know what's well. If this film is going to be, don't make me put uh, my bubble tea down. Okay, I, I'm <laughs> just I'm just worried that it's going to be Alien Isolation, the film. Oh, well, would that really well, be a bad more, thing? I was going to say, is that the bad thing? Cause alien yes, because Alien Isolation. Yes, because we've already probably... got I- Alien Isolation. Okay, that's fair point. Yeah, yeah, but we've already got Fallout, but they produce a TV show. We've already got um, The Last of Us, but they produce the TV show. Both of those have been really good. So... Yeah, but Alien Alien Romulus is a film. Not it's yeah. not the um, TV show. No, I know. Uh, I know. I, um... I've already seen posters for it at the local uh, cinema. Shall we say right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I, I know we... it's just an alien's head. I mean, I've never seen that before on an alien poster. Mm, there you go. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I'm cautiously optimistic only because I thought Fade Al- Alvarez's Evil Dead reboot was pretty solid, and I thought Don't Breathe was pretty solid. I like Don't Breathe definitely. So the idea of that director and that team working on an alien movie at least gives me hope that there's going to be some tension and some suspe- some suspense. Of course, the big My... question is: right, mm. Are you going to the cinema to watch it, or are you going to the cinema to watch it? <laughs> ah, well, I think I think I've seen I've seen every other alien movie at the cinema. Yeah. So, so yeah, I feel, so I feel like, so I feel like I should at least give it that 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 chance. I mean, if I can sit through fucking Alien Resurrection or the AVP movies at the fucking cinema, I can certainly sit through this. Yeah, I don't think anything could be as bad as AVP fucking Requiem. So we'll see. Jim, have you got any last thoughts on it? Um. It's one. Of the, it, it looks good, but it should do. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, at this point. But my, my, I, I will say this as a word of caution. Um, while um, the director definitely can spin a good yarn, mm. I, I would I would give you a little red flag that there might be some things that will make um, Alien Geek's blood boil, because that's what he did mm. in Evil Dead. He actually ditched the how his version of the Necronomicon was some sort of boring, satanic, medieval witchcraft thing, not ancient Kandarian demons like it should be. Yeah. And it's one of those things mm. in that movie's kind of well, why did you do that? What was, what mm. was the point in that? You know what I mean? You're kind of ditching mm. Key a whole part of the, the yeah, yeah, of the mythos, you know what I mean? And not getting it right. It just seemed kind of like just for no reason. Mm. Um, so, you know, fully expect, you know, there might be similar tinkering with aliens law. It's like the yeah. chestbursters lay the eggs and ride around on the big aliens' heads, going, go and get it, fuck him, fuck him up. 
who knows cool. but you know <laughs> yeah i'm yeah my my only con- my own concern with my 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 alien purists hat on is always been the speed of the chest bursters and insofar as the first film which is arguably the one that lays the template you're talking about face hugger john hurt out for the count for hours if not a whole day Mm. then he gets up and he has to have some food and he's woofing it down because the thing needs to grow as quickly as it can. So he's woofing down that food and then it comes out. I'm just hoping they don't do the AVP thing, which is we haven't got time to have a 24 hour cycle inside a temple. So we have 12 people get impregnated with the, with the face huggers in less than 10 minutes and make it like a rage virus where it's kind of like if it so much as even goes near you that's it game over i hate that so much i did i hated that so much and then and especially with alien covenant as well with with the guy who got a sort of like just the tip moment at the beginning i uh, know at the end yeah the soldier yep. he got just the tip and he threw it off and it still fucking got him and it was like really and then when the bloody face, when the chestburster came out as whole cloth as a whole alien, but just very, very small, it was just like, no, nope, no, nope, that's it. <laughs> I've had enough. That was like space balls. Mm. It was hello, he my did baby. Just, hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He just needed a straw boater and a fucking cane. Um, so, yeah, I, I need. I just need just that little bit there. I just need to feel like something grows as opposed to just instantaneously appears like a fucking, you know, like a, like a, like a video game boss, you know, it's just sort of like pop. There it is. So yeah, that's well, the only thing. As you've said before, Jim, if this is part seven or eight of a franchise, very rarely mm. do they get any better. This is true. Except Prey, I would I would argue yeah. Prey is probably one of the best Predator movies out of how many Predator films now? Uh, Some. <laughs> Multiples. <laughs> at, at least four. Doing troll quite, counting yeah. there. Predator, one, Predator two, two, three, many, lots, some. Predators. <laughs> predators. And yeah, five, and then you got the Alien versus Predator, seven, yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd say five. Yeah, so there you go. So yeah, yeah, I would... but they fucked it up at the end. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was oh. so, like, they they almost had that. That mm. was almost done. Yeah, well, I, I I can I can forgive the end, but I but I give that I give that a lot more credit than. What was what was the um, Shane Black one? The oh, I haven't. Yeah, I've never oh. watched that. I refuse God. to watch that. Me and Darren watched that at the cinema, didn't we, Dal? Yep. weren't we Weren't we happy to see that big silly suit at the end? Oh, weren't we just? <laughs> and it's like that's going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in there. Gonna yeah, be, it's gonna be, no, it's going to be he's gonna Dutch. He's Dutch. He's made a return. No. Oh, he's not. <laughs> no, oh, the credits are rolling. What yep. the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck is this nonsense? Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave that there. So there you go. Uh, a bit of a throwback. Prometheus news now. It's all done. There you go. Someone out there, I'm not naming names, but someone out there is quite happy now because we've, <laughs> we've done a throwback. We've done a throwback. Um, Very quickly then, let's just do some uh, feedback for last week's episode. Last week we um did uh, the, was it? I'm trying to remember what we bloody did now. Um. Oh God! What brain. did we do? Northman. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That that stuck with us, didn't it? <laughs> so we reviewed the Norm- Northman. Um. Obviously, we did have some technical issues, so we did have a moment of, you know, Matt Jones saying, you know, he hopes that it'll be entertaining nonetheless. While I was sitting there going, it's all ruined. We've got nothing. Ah. And uh, uh Mighty Zim, Adrian Saunders saying, Fa- "Is this the found footage, Black Dog?" Which actually it was by the end of it because I think it actually the files you gave uh, you, we got off of Zencaster were fine, but the stuff that I had downloaded from um, Clean Feed was um, patchy. Let's just say oh, that. Dear. Yeah, 
which which is another thing. I, I would go into what I sent to Clean Feed and how they responded, but yeah, just yeah. Uh, David Renane, um, happy Dave over in uh, New Zealand said, uh, "Cinema equidistant is now a real now has real estate in my head, built on the smoking remains of the Chuckle Hut Dartford." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's good. I think we should we should the Black Dog Cinema Equidistent. <laughs> if we ever do a TV <laughs> series version of the Black Dog, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, instead, Spaceship said um, said Skarsgård's role in the Northman. Um, he was born to do it. Scandinavian and once known as Eric Northman in True Blood. Um, whereas Atlas, which we also reviewed, I fell asleep. I woke to Lopez having a hissy fit in a shittily designed mech suit. Just started started reading Robo 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 Apocalypse, a far better story when the machines rise, i.e., psychotic Roombas and AI. Um, Sean Gleason uh, jumped in and said, "Okay, I've been listening to years, and I thought we ran out of Brit- British names of things that I didn't know, but Splinter, uh, Splinter, and Weed Whacker." It's interesting. I'm interested in discovering more. I think he meant Strimmer, so I kind of corrected him. I went, yeah. it was called Strimmer, or oh fuck, that thing's blasted shit all over my garden. And uh, yeah, there you go. Um, John Campion, uh, who has been supplying us with a load of excellent heads ups on the Facebook group uh, for for any movies coming out on streaming that we miss, mm. said, um, said, I should have liked The Northman. It had big ideas. Oh, you like Hamlet? Well, I... Well, I like the Norse epic that inspired it. You wouldn't have heard of it. Um, gorgeous production design, and pretty much every shot is superbly framed. It just didn't click with me, though. The accents kept pulling me out. Are they Irish? Are they Scots? What the fuck? And then they it had a po face seriousness that didn't feel earned. Blue Ruin is still my favourite bleak revenge p- pick, I reckon. Which is very true. And then, finally, David Jackola... Um, came back in to uh, fill us in a little bit more on the bear meme thing that we thought we'd put to bed last week, but apparently not. So um, he said, since 1784, there have been 66 fatal human bear conflicts by wild black bears. Meanwhile, there's 4,970 female victims of murder and non-negligent manslaughter in 2021 alone. This is why women keep choosing the bear. There you go. And there we go. Uh, yeah. Um, I've got nothing more to say on that matter. Just leave the facts where they stand and we shall move on. I shall hold if, my peace. <laughs> well, the thing is, if we, if we, I, I'm still talking about a meme that I still haven't actually seen beyond yeah. the one that Teresa posted up. So I've got, <laughs> I still got no fight in the race. I just got to just take what's being said and be presented to me as, you know, in good faith, which is obviously what Dave, Dave is doing. Yeah. So fair enough. So, Yep, that's it. So bears, stick with a bear. As as Timothy, is it Timothy Treadwell and Grizzly Man found out? You know, bears, they're, they're good. They're good boys. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are good boys, especially Mr. Chocolate. He's lovely. Um. Anyway, Chocolate. right, so we're going we're gonna, to, yeah, have you not seen Grizzly Man? No, I haven't. No. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. When that per- turns up again on Amazon, we are doing that because... Okay. Because as a documentary with Werner Herzog going, yes, he sees the beast as a <laughs> as a cuddly friend or animal. He sees it as a pet. He does not see the wild abyss that stares back at him. And it's just like, yeah, yeah, okay. And there's Timothy Schedule going, hello, Mr. Chocolates. I'm sure you'll be friends with me. And you know, standing there while the thing's going, <laughs> we've Timothy Treadwell's body was found underneath a tree. <laughs> Stuffed into a small hole, kept for food for the winter. <laughs> Mr. Chocolates. Oh. Yeah, so um, anyway, we'll leave that there. Right, so let's roll. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, pull, oh, let's draw. <laughs> what? They found his body with a tree inserted into an orifice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did not understand the nature of the beast. He looked into the abyss, and the abyss stuffed him into a hole in a tree for later. <laughs> <laughs> the abyss wanted a Twix, 
but instead settled on Timothy Treadwell. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so we'll leave it there. We'll roll the jingle and then we'll come back to review Black Phone. <laughs> So, The Black Phone is a 2021 American supernatural horror film directed by Scott Derrickson, who did um, Sinister and also the first Doctor Strange movie. Um, it's from a screenplay co-authored with the longtime collaborator C. Robert Cargill and stars Mason Thames as Finney, a teenage boy abducted by a child serial killer known colloquially as the Grabber, played by Ethan Hawke. Um, and then Finney encounters a mysterious, mystical, magical black rotary phone in captivity and uses it to plot his escape. I won't say any more than that because the rest of it is spoilers. And yet somehow someone's put it in the Wikipedia all up the front. Um, the mo- twats. <laughs> like a complete bunch of twats. The movie is a Blumhouse movie, which means that as with all Blumhouse movies, the budget doesn't go over 20 million quid. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what do you think it made at the box office gym? I think it made 20. Oh, because of course I'm the grabber, you dumb fart knockers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and Elton, what do you think it made? Uh, one comedy sized steak for a dog. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Darren. Um, I think it made one brick, or should I say one stone lobbed at the side of someone's head mm-hmm. and uh, 15 days of being beaten up by your bully. Right. Well, actually, you're all wrong. It's actually an entire house being renovated using a toilet cistern lid. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. Perfectly square <laughs> hole cut. Perfectly square <laughs> hole cut using a toilet system lid, which is remarkably sturdy for something going through dry stone wall. But there you go. Anyway, box office actually was 161 million, so it really made its money back. In fact, it made 10 times its budget. So that is pretty darn fucking good. So, as ever, we will go around the table uh we will finish lastly on you dal because it was your pick and then we'll move into the uh into the magical marvelous world of well i say magical marvelous world it's just spoiler zone (laughs) i've got magical marvelous in my head now after reading that description of that bloody phone um right so let's go around the table and uh let's find out briefly spoiler wise um no spoilers. What did everyone think of the black phone? And I'm going to start with you, Elton, as you are our typical horror aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> really? Me? Yeah, no. yeah, you, man. You're our man. You're our man on the inside. Yeah. So go on, plate up your potatoes, mate, and tell us what you thought. Uh, no potatoes for me this time round. I didn't mm-hmm. actually think it was a horror at all, really. Okay. Cool. Um, I, I found it interesting. I quite mm-hmm. like the characters that are involved in it. Mm-hmm. Although I was, a, I don't know, it just felt a, a film of two halves where mm-hmm. you had all all this set up and then the other stuff that was mm-hmm. you know, after the setup. And I, I didn't know whether it was uh, mystical or, or, ghostly or or what i'm not too sure what it was trying to be Mm. although i did enjoy it ethan hawke Mm. is always good yes definitely always good uh but i i enjoy i think i enjoyed it (laughs) i yeah no i enjoyed it i enjoyed it yes but i'm i'm looking forward to talking about it because not that mm. I didn't get it or anything like that, but it's just, mm. what was it about? That was my question. What? what okay. I, I couldn't really work out the, you know, some films have a, a hidden story that really kicks you in the teeth. 
I didn't get that from this. Okie dokie. All right. Well, we'll come to that, I guess, in the in the in the uh, spoiler zone. Um, cool. Right. So, so a sort of cautious up thumb. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. Okay then. Um. So over to you then, Jim. What did you think? Um. This is the second time watch for me. Mm-hmm. Uh. So. It, um. Picking my words carefully. I mean, it's not kind of like a, a Twelve Monkeys sort of second watch, if you know what I mean. But it's mm. it's a very interesting film when you know where it's all going to watch it a second time. Yeah. Because you have context for things happen early on that mm. the first time you, you don't realise the significance and it all it's just a really well oh it's just a nice well told sort of story. I, I really enjoyed it the first time, I really enjoyed it the, the second time and I think I appreciate it sort of more the second time. Right, because I think it's kind of a lot, of, lot woven in there. Mm. But I say it is kind of, I'd say it's. Uh, I would say it's probably not really a scary film. It's not really. I mean, mm. it's a horror film, but it is kind of. It, I think it kind of you know is like. It's probably close to something like the um, Stand by Me in some ways. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a film well, about childhood, yeah. and, mm. and and families and growing up and. As much as it is about the horror of the situation. Well, I, I should bring up at this point that it was written by Joe Hill, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Um, Stephen King's son. Uh, so the uh, Stand By Me, It kind of allusions. Uh, yeah, don't, it does, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, let's put it that way, in terms okay. of the writing. Yeah, yellow Rain Mac. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Balloons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Mm. <laughs> we all float down here. Hiya, Judgy. <laughs> um anyway. So, okay then. Yes, your boat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, um yeah, okay, cool. So you so you so you appreciate it more the second time round then, Jim. Yeah, yeah. I mean I think it's just a very well crafted mm. um very sort of well well sort of done movie, really. I think mm. it's a it's kind of a fun watch, but there's some meat on the bones there as well. Cool. Okie mm. dokie. Brilliant. Well, then, uh, what about... Oh, well, what about me? Because I was going to say, what about you, Dal? But then I realised you're going last because it was your pick. Yeah. So, um, for me, I'll be honest with you, it was a film of two halves. The first half, I was watching it thinking, so far, so... As you say, Jim, so stand by me, it, um, you know little hints of the shining here and there all the standard main dairy new england tropes that kind of come storming in with a stephen king film or a stephen king story or a stephen king adjacent story you know dad's always drinking someone's got something going on it all felt a bit too familiar the second half however started to ramp up the tension and ramp up the the weirdness and by the end came to a cathartic end that was for me the bit that it was it was the Darth Vader going down the corridor in Rogue One it was the moment where I suddenly went yeah go on fucking it Jim and I was I was kind of I realized that the film had got his hooks into me so I really enjoyed it because the the second half and the finale proved to me that actually the film's taking its time at the beginning had had done exactly what it needed to do which right. sink its hooks into me and make me go oh, I actually care about this kid and I care I know what's going on here and I understand all these things and I understand context now so therefore the payoff feels more visceral and by like I say by the end it was I was kind of like go on fucking do him <laughs> and um yeah so i i was i came away from it like i say very much the end of rogue one you know you kind of going there's Darth Vader and he's fucking killing everyone yeah kind of thing so yeah that was that was kind of my, my reaction to the film i think i need to lie down um so <laughs> what about you Dal? <laughs> Well, um, I've never seen this film before. Mm. Um, I heard good things about it. I mm. thought, you know what? Let's mm. give this a go. And I'm so glad I've 
picked mm. this film. I really, really enjoyed it mm. from start to finish. Mm. I thought this was a, gr- a really, really good film. Mm. Um, I, I especially, I mean, of course, every, any film really rests on its actors to sell it, mm. and um, yeah, the main cast and even even Finn's best mate, who I mm. thought was absolutely great as well. Um, mm. It's, I know that, I know when you said there wasn't, you wasn't quite sure what the theme was for this film. Yeah. For me, it's the theme was finally standing up for yourself, getting backed into a corner, and it's what do you do when you've got nowhere else to run? Because mm. the boy bullied a lot, and then this is like the ultimate of that. And what do you do? What do you do to turn that around? Do you, do you keel over? And, you know, give in to the situation or do you fight back? And in the end, because that's what his mate said to him as well, one day. That, that spoilers. Yeah. Steady. Uh, um, yeah. Mm. That's what I thought. But no, I loved it. Um, I especially, I especially loved the little sister in that as well, <laughs> just because she fucking kicks ass. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The sister. <laughs> yes. The fart knocker thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Just not take no fucking prisoners. Yes, that's it. So, um, I mean, as you say, Lee, it is a very cathartic film. Um, on various different points, it was very cathartic for me. Yeah. But um, I get what you mean about the end, and I won't mm. say what comes out of my mouth every time I get a film that's like that. Mm. But I, I, there's a phrase I seem to say now. When it comes to, mm. you know, like a villain mm. getting there, just desserts, <laughs> and it's keep hitting them until there's a fucking wet sound. Yeah, you know, that's it. <laughs> fucking <laughs> have it. Hit them again. <laughs> Hit them again. Hit them again. And I can't Should... help it. It's almost like, yeah, I'm being possessed by something, and I sit there. Hit them again. Hit them again. Hit them again. Dude. Dude. Okay. Dude. Sorry. Spoilers. I'll shut up. I'll just shut up. <laughs> no, um, no, you don't. I don't want you to shut up. I just, I just can't help it. What's just... the point of having the ah! spoiler zone if we do the do it in the opening? <laughs> hey man, you, you mentioned the Vader thing, so it's kind of <laughs> that's already out the bag now. So it's all like, right, okay. Uh, uh, can't help yeah, got over it. I can have it. <laughs> it's until yeah. there's a With wet fumes. sound. I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, well there you go. So there's our range of <laughs> range of opinions, all you know, ranging levels of p- p- you know positivity, all in all positive mm-hmm. I review. Think so. I think. Yeah. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, leave it there if you haven't seen the film and you don't want it spoiled. As ever, pause it, go watch the film, come back for the rest of it. But yeah, anything from here on in, you've got you've only got yourself to blame. So uh yeah, it's time time to uh pull in the old uh <laughs> pull in I'm i I'm just dreading this because I haven't tried this thing yet. But um time to pull in time to pull in the spoiler zone. So here we go. Cobra, la, 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 baby baby Put your helmet on, we'll be reaching speeds of three. Euphemism. Shut up, Wesley. So here we are in the spoiler zone. <laughs> Just pressing random buttons and hoping that it was at all at the right volume. The the euphemism one wasn't right. That was that I need to turn that volume up. But now if I touch it, it's all going to start going making noises. Yep. Hold on, euphemism. That's much better. I'll save that. <laughs> there you go. Um, so you you know that's the only thing we're going to be playing to next week, Jim. When you're off, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I don't expect nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. That's the the moon AI box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, so here we are in the spoiler zone. So let's start from the beginning. I mean, Elton, you said you wanted to know what the theme was, and yeah, and and you know, Darren's put a bit forward about it being the bully, the standing up for yourself. Did you? 
what, were you looking for more? Was you looking for a bit more than that, or or did you see that as a as a theme? Or well, I I saw the family thing. I, I saw the you know, the the bullying aspect of things, but nothing really jumped out at me as if as if to say this is what this film is about. Mm. Yeah. And I I think it is more about. Yeah, the bully and the family and but I don't know, maybe I was just looking for I think that the voices and the ghosts and the and the phone kind of sidestepped me a little bit. Because mm. I wasn't ex- I I wasn't expecting it to take that sort of turn. Right. Wait where, where all of a sudden you you start getting phone calls from a mystical phone that isn't attached. Right. And I, I I couldn't work out what they were. Were they <laughs> it sounds dumb, but mm. I couldn't work out whether they were in his head, whether they were on the end end of the phone or mm. what. How I don't know how that works. How did that right. work? I don't think you can say they were in his head because no. how would he know about the various different things? Like the freezer in the storeroom, or the um, the wire that was buried in the wall. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of like no, that was, you know, th- that's how information he's being fed mm. on the fly. Yeah, the. I I mean I'm 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 wondering if Jim, if you're going to jump in, but I was going to say that the the one thing that came to my mind was the shining. Mm, well, it is because he's. Mm. From what the father says, he's kind of. Um, his mum had, for one of a better term, The Shining. His daughter, mm. his sister, is definitely having sort of dreams where she can see things psychically. But he's got a touch of it as well. And for him, it's manifesting in the phone ringing. Yeah. Right. And, and, that's, and that's, kind of, that's kind of scattered throughout the whole thing because she's getting the dreams and then the dad as as jim points out the dad says you know your mum sort of like would hear these things and would hear these voices and see these visions and eventually they started to tell us bad stuff Mm -hmm. and then it suddenly it was kind of like yeah that's exactly like remember dr sleep when we watched that Mm. and then i'm and then it's sort of like so you got dr sleep you got this and then you go back to the original, which is The Shining with Danny Torrance, you know, seeing the ghosts. And then, but he, you know, but again, you know, his mum can't see it, but his dad can. And so there's this kind of whole, you know, it's a kind of a Stephen King, Joe Hill kind of theme that there's a certain magical sprinkling that will just kind of add something else in there. Mm-hmm. A sort of, well... I hate the phrase, but magical realism is the way they kind of do it. It's like it's like fantasy, but it's set in the real world. Yeah, I, I think I was sidetracked by that, thinking that that was the theme of of the actual movie itself, but it, it wasn't. That was just a, a byproduct really. of it. Yeah, yeah, but, but but the fact that he has has these sort of powers is kind of why. Um, his family is fucked up mm. and it's something his dad eventually comes to terms to with his daughter having them from trying to deny it very violently mm. yeah um and it does kind of see watching it a second time as i joined all those dots of that sort of that family sort of story arc mm. um it's also it's interesting i picked up a second the grabber he can hear the phone ring as well yeah um, and he's a line. Uh, he he said so he's hit it when he's down there, which implies um, mm. he maybe was abused by one of his parents and locked in that cellar as well. Yeah, and it's kind of it's his original trauma and what goes on there that makes that phone that sort of like a, like a magical object, a yeah. conduit, if you will, for a magnet for these sort of psychic powers. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because I mean, 
I, I don't want to sound patronizing because I know we've always taken the piss out of how many films you've seen and haven't seen. But yeah. have you seen many Stephen King movies? Yeah, I think I have. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've seen my, my fair share, definitely. And they always have that moment. I mean, with the exception of Shawshank and Stand By Me. Yeah. The rest of them all have that magical element in them. Yeah. Whether it's the, you know, where it's whether it's the mist or whether it's you know um the green mile you know there's always there's always that little supernatural twist to the yeah. whole thing and if i'd known that then maybe i would have clicked on to that mm. i wasn't aware of that i just went in totally blind yeah cool okay so do you reckon you need to know that to to kind of understand what's going on here I, is this part of like a a king universe not particularly. I mean, I think it's just a thing of, um, I mean, it's an old, what my wife says in the road, but, you know, they say talents run in families, mm-hmm. any talent, like, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's like for maths or music, when the acting does, you know, goes for true, people have had the sight or, mm-hmm. and, exactly. but it is kind of, it's more, I think it's all self-contained in this film. And so you're watching it a second time, it's kind of, what the father's doing, particularly how he's reacting to the daughter having dreams, it makes more sense the second time round. Now I can see, I can see all the dots. Mm. I, did, and I say mean, it's more. It's more. But it's more about sort of fam- families and um, facing up to things than his psych- psychic powers. The psychic powers are just a MacGuffin, hmm. just a plot oh, mechanism, really. Yeah. I was going to say, did you get did you get the whole psychic thing down? Because I mean, obviously, your you, this is your first view as well. So, mm. were you were you down with that? Or I already knew. Um, I I kind of had that little tiny thing spoiled for me, but viewing the film, he kind of works it out anyway. He does say in it, he actually speaks mm. it out. So mm. he explains. The, the character itself explains what those voices are. Yeah. And then you get these kids turning up in there that he can't see them, but he can hear them, but you can see them. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, go on. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> that's all right. Um, so, yeah, and he actually does say their names. Like, oh, you were that one that disappeared while you were delivering papers. Um, mm. Your name's this. You disappeared then. It, it, it kind of... You know, he acknowledges that these voices have belonged to the kids that were killed by the serial killer. And that's why they trust him. Yeah. Because that's the thing I got, was that they only started to offer information once he gave them their name. Mm. Sort of put, you know, remembered them, helped them out. I don't know if there's some mystical sort of explanation for that that's kind of well established, but... That's kind of the thing I got was that they would start. They started to trust him as much as anything else. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's like, oh, you you remember who I was? Yeah, I think that's the thing. Um, it's not. There's nothing I can call to mind of any particular like folklore or occult stuff based on that. But mm. there's a general idea that ghosts are looking to find rest. Mm. And part of the reason is kind of like, oh, you you know who I was. You remember. Yeah, and that's why they help him because it kind of if he can get out, they can rest as well, mm. because their bodies will be found and buried properly, whereas currently yeah. just in limbo. Um, mm. Hmm. Okay. I was I was going to say, and I'll I'll start with you on this one, Dal. We none of us found it particularly scary from the sound of things. Just like a creepy kind of kidnapping yeah. kind of show. You brought up the the ghosts appearing. Hmm. Now, for me, I found that a cheap jump scare and probably the the one weak link in the film because it didn't need to happen. And it does that horrible, bloody great thing of, you know, the film's just progressing and then all of a sudden it goes, Bee! and then has a quick flash of light and you see a ghost and then it make, and it's like, that's not scaring you. That's just making you jump from the sudden noise. Hmm. How, what did you think about having the ghosts there on screen? Was it did it did it help scare you, or was it or did it do anything to help? Because for me, those were the weak links. 
Um, no, I, you could have done with or without them. Uh, the only one that uh, was any kind of use being there, and that was the one that was upside down, who pointed in the sort of the, the crab shape mm. that pointed out something to mm. him. You know, put him in was the right the paper direction. boy? It could very well have been. I don't know. Mm. I but, don't know. Um, yeah. You know, I it didn't really I didn't really mind it at all. Um mm. but you really you could have just done this without the ghost being there. Um mm. I mean, because they you see things like you like when the bottles started moving, they just moved mm. by themselves. So you know, it's um I could take it or leave it, if I've got mm. to be totally honest. Okay. Anyone anyone else got a view on that, on those ghosts and the jump scares? Uh, I say quite like how they did the ghosts, particularly well, he, he can't see them when they just mm. appear behind him and often yeah. he can't see their faces. I thought that was actually quite visually, that's really quite good. Mm. In particularly where like the um the the metal kid is kind of it's almost like he's said too much and he's pulled away back into the darkness. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And it is kind of I, I did like that because it is kind of like, oh, there's is a, a bigger sort of thing of sort of rules we don't understand going on here. Mm. And they're kind of breaking the rules to get to him, to give mm. him a, a more message. But it's kind of, it's a fleeting connection. Yeah. Okay. Mm, cool. I, I think it works. I think you need mm. them in, in the picture. Otherwise, okay. it's it's just watching a kid in the 80s in the hallway on the phone and mm. you know that that's not terribly exciting on its own whereas if you've got a ghost creeping around mm. and with the voice of the telephone as well it, it's kind of emphasizing they're on the phone they're mm. coming through that line mm. they're not in the room talking to him but this is what is being visualized in his mind yeah okay so i think it works Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, I just, I, I just thought it was the one misstep because the film had done more about building atmosphere and building characters and building situations, and then to just go to a cheap jump scare when, even though it's, it was a, you know, it's a twelve A horror film. I mean, it was still, you still had like, you know, Ethan, just Ethan Hawke with that mask on, just standing in the shadows you know, on the stairs going, what's your name? Asking the kid what his name is, and then the kid gives him the wrong name. And it's just like, ooh, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like him standing there in that shadow. Just come out and I can see your silly mask, and it's all fine. But the the fact you couldn't see what his mask, the, ma- the mask emotion was, hmm. it was just like, yay. Do you think films like this play on people having masks as well because we we've done a fair few haven't we we did that that time one with the girl and they had a silly little mask oh i forget something killer oh totally killer yeah totally killer yes that mm-hmm. one and then you had like a house invasion as well hush uh, was that hush mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they do tend to become like a character in themselves where they are a selling point. The masks. Yeah, the actual mask itself. Mm. And and they, they kind of want to do these so kids can latch onto the, the mask and then it can get reproduced and used in Halloween and have crazy kids running up and down the street terrorizing old ladies in mm. in their mask. And sometimes I wonder whether it's needed or not. Um, I've got a, I've got a theory mm. about the mask. Thing. Go on. It's the way that Ethan Hawke's character mm. kind of reacts to it. Now, mm. going from a personal point of view, when I'm cosplaying, a bit closer um, to the mic, mate. Oh, sorry, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You're still a bit quiet. Go on. Okay. So, from a psychological point of view, where the mask is concerned. Mm. Um, if I go, I do cosplay at a convention. Right. right. I'm dressed up as something like Deathstroke. I'm completely covered from head to toe in body armor, and I've got this complete face mask mm. on. 
I almost feel like I'm not myself when I've got that on and I am embodying mm. whichever character it is on cosplay, whether it's Deathstroke or whatever. Mm. And it just takes me out of myself. And, you know, mm. I, I get the feeling that what the mask is all about mm. is a way of removing blame from themselves for the acts that they perform. You Which mean is like, why when the yeah. mask is ripped off, it's like an admission, finally, the killer has to accept that this is what oh, he does. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm. Which is why he screams when it comes off of his face. Yeah. It's, it's, always, it's like a way of denying what they do mm. to separate themselves. So it's, it's like the whole psychology of if you're about to get... Um, if you're about to get attacked by someone, if you're right. a, if somebody's going to kill you, you know they're coming for it, and you've never met them before. It's telling them your names, telling them things about yourself, so you make yourself more human to them. Mm. It's a, it's 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 sort of like strains of that involved in it, right? As well, it's um, oh, I can't really explain it, but um. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that mask is a barrier. Right. It's so well, it's the fact this mask isn't an immobile. It's not like a slasher villain mask where it's kind of it is mm. meant to be impassive. It's you modular know, it's as like well. Michael Myers' face or mm. Jason's hockey mask. They give nothing away, and that yeah, it sort of dehumanizes them. But mm. the grabber's mask, he has different expressions depending on his mood. He presents a different face. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's it's part of how he terrorizes the kids. Mm. Mm. You see that also when he was set upstairs waiting for him to come up. You know, when mm. the, the grabber is sat there in the kitchen, and you see it's no longer the smiley face he's got on them. The module has been removed, and it's now the grumpy face. The grumpy face. I'm pretty sure there's something also to be said about removing the top part of his mask and having his proper eyes. Yes, you know, the, yes, that, definitely looking mm. at them. There's a yeah. there's some sort of subtext there. I mean, there's everything. It's it's very much different layers of psychology going on there. Yeah. Um, different meanings for which part of the mask he's wearing and which part he isn't. Like when he's got the hat on with the mask, when he's got that off and he's got. Mm. Does he ever wear the stuff. hat with the mask? Um, he does when he's outside. There's that bit yeah. when it, you see him put it on just before. I'm a magician. Would you like to see a trick? Mm-hmm. Mm. He hasn't got it on then, though. Oh, he does. He puts it on his head. No, but he, he hasn't got the mask on, though. Uh, no, 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 he doesn't. He... he has a white face, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He, paints, mm. he paints his face white. So, in in essence, mm. it is it is a mask still. Right. Mm. So, yeah. there we go. It's anything that's not just his bare naked face. Mm you know, interacting with the victim. Yeah, there's, there's some sort of layer there that yeah. takes him away. It's like a, anonymity on the internet, what that mm. does to people, right? Yeah. That's it, because you're not, it's kind of deep down not admitting to what you're actually feeling. It's that whole thing of you don't have to take mm. ownership of that. You're you're an anonymous presence, which is why people give themselves such strange sort of names on the internet. You know, yeah. like their mm. net names, whatever. I think um, maybe there's a study there to be had. You know, yeah. I've always called myself. I mean, normally, um, when it comes down to it, I've. I mean, on Facebook, it's my full name. I haven't called myself something completely different. Um, I'm normally oh. pretty. Sorry, gone. I was going to say, is this is are we actually reviewing the film, or have you just used this as an excuse for a cry for help? No, no. <laughs> but I think it's relevant. I think yeah, it, I know. that I'm joking, is, you know, the mm. it's that whole thing of identity and, mm. um, yeah, terrible acts that he performs, he can take a step back from. Mm. You know, he can just yeah. unlink himself from it, and so he's not a terrible person. Yet the mask comes off, and it's kind of like, "Oh shit, I am the one mm. doing these acts." Yeah. Well, the, I'm, I'm just looking. I'm actually looking up the masks um, on Wikipedia, mm-hmm. and because Wikipedia could always be trusted. Oh, of course, but, um, of course, <laughs> of course, it's always the, the font of all utterly reliable knowledge. 
But <laughs> no, the um the the masks themselves were designed and um produced by Tom Zavini. Mm. Oh wow, really? Yeah, who did all the did all the um classic prosthetic makeups for some all the George Romero Romero movies and various mm. other monster films. But um but they're based around the um comic um masks of ancient Greek theatre, exaggerating the conveying joy, mm. despair and nihilism in exaggerated forms to portray the inside act actions the inside emotions of the actor because in Greek theatre they were playing to massive amphitheaters from miles and miles of you know, people who were hundreds and hundreds of yards away. So you needed a big, clear, easily defined face to see. And it was you projecting your emotion out. I wonder so, what the mask without the mouth meant. Is he had the truth? Just, mm. It could be. Yeah. And what about the the fact that he took the bottom part off of the mask at one point and just had the top half? Again, it's kind of him coming out underneath because because mm. the one thing he says in the film is is that because we, you know he doesn't know, but because he's because Finn's being helped because Finn's being helped by by all the um, previous victims, he's he's doing things which are not running to plan. Yeah. And so the plan's gone off through the rails, and so he doesn't know what to do. So the the mask almost conveys confusion. Mm. The real person underneath going, "What the fuck's going on?" While the mask half is sort of still in very much in control. Um, because that was the thing I found fascinating was really those changing masks were all giving you clues as to what was going to happen. Because mm. you know. Because then all of a sudden, you know, when you know he was expecting Finn to lie to him, so he already had the "you're the angry, bo- you know, you're the naughty boy" thing yeah. made, face on, ready to go. So it was kind of the Ethan Hawke character was kind of anticipating his own emotional state, but wasn't able to convey it. So he was he was putting the masks on, ready to go. I mean, it was just very interesting. I thought the masks were the, probably the most fascinating bit of the lot, to be honest, because it was just a different way of putting things. Um, how do we all feel about the the final? I mean, I'm only saying this because I know we're going to get to it at some point. We're thirty odd minutes into the review, but how the finale came about, and what I mean by this is in two parts. Because in the first part, I mean, you know how all the kids gave him a little piece of information that would eventually allow him to formulate a kind of a a slightly more bleak version of the Home Alone kind of traps. But also, (laughs) the second part is how the sister is doing all this kind of shining type stuff Mm -hmm. and nobody believes her. And then all of a sudden, the cops just do. To the um, point where they completely mobilise. It's the <laughs> fact that she gives them information that's not public knowledge, and it's accurate. Yeah, but they didn't believe her when she did that the first time, when she starts calling them fart knockers and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. She she gives them that information, doesn't she? She says, oh, you know, I see it in a dream, and they're like, well, how did you know about the black balloons? How do you know that? And she goes, I see it in a dream. And they're very dismissive. Whereas towards the end of the film and she finds 7741 Evergreen Terrace or wherever the fuck it was and then you know because she saw it in a dream of the rocker kid you know carving it on someone's arm yeah mm. and then all of a sudden she goes that's the thing I found my brother come and help me blah 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 and I've seen it in a dream and the policemen are like she saw it in a dream guys come on let's all go <laughs> well I think that's why that scene is done in silence so you you're forever wondering what she actually said to them to actually make them mobilize like that she said something yeah that was clearly defining but we don't know we'll never know it's also it's also you've got to bear in mind the cops are now another kid's gone missing Mm. on their watch Yeah, and it's kind of I mean I know from real world cases cops do follow leads from psychics because 
if you're really up fucking against it, you will t- you'll take anything. Yeah. Like, you uh, never know. You never know. It's the mm. Sherlock Holmes thing. Go on. You take everything you know about a situation, and mm. you, t- you slowly sort of like you know you mark off everything that doesn't make sense or doesn't fit, mm. and in the end, whatever's left, however improbable, that's your answer. Ah, uh, take take all your yeah, take all the dismiss all the facts. Dis- that's it. Was it yeah. take all the facts? Dismiss all the facts that don't fit the you know don't fit the um the answer. Yeah, and, and eventually left. whatever you left is the truth. Yeah, yeah. however improbable. Yeah, because I was going to say because the other because the other one was it, I was reminded of um because I said about watching Wicked Little Letters. Yeah, at one point in that, and it's not a spoiler; it's just a gag. But the dim wit, there's a dim wit police officer constable, um, and he walks in, and they're all still trying to prove that Jesse Buckley's written the letters, and and you know, and then all of a sudden this this cop comes in and he goes, "Excuse me, sir, I've got a really I've got a really interesting lead." And they go, "Right, go on, what is it?" And he goes, "I've got I've got a psychic, and she's got an amethyst. She says it's a real powerful one. It's really shiny." And then you see the constable, uh, the police sergeant, just go, "Fuck off!" <laughs> 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 and I was, I had that in my head <laughs> when 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 late, when the little girl turns up and goes, "I saw it in a dream." I was just waiting for the police constable to go, "Fuck off." <laughs> I've, we've got an amethyst. It's a really good one. It's a really po- polished, shiny one. And the, <laughs> it's like, fuck off. Can I just say, I love that bit when a, a, a brother is getting beaten up and she comes running in with that rock mm. and fucking wallops that kid around. And it's the, like the fucking strawberry jam he's got coming out of his head <laughs> after that as he's set up against mm. the wall like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think my brains are leaking. Hmm. Well, that that's let's get let's get into that because I mean that's the thing in this 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 does this does for for American school system what Grange Hill does for the British secondary school system. It just seems like everyone's getting the fuck beaten out of them <laughs> all the goddamn time. <laughs> what? Did, how did you feel about that? Because just before we go into, from my point of view, I've read enough Stephen King books. And enough Joe Hill books to know that school is an institution where, which is just one shade slightly better than prison <laughs> in terms of the way you get fucked up, kicked up, bashed in, bullied, destroyed, generally harangued, and psychologically damaged. Yeah. How did you guys feel about it? Because as soon as that started to happen, I was like, and there's the Stephen King connection. <laughs> there it is. Drunk, da- drunk dad school bullies and we're off um i think in general um it's agreed that kids themselves are some of the most like evil individuals on the face of the planet when it comes to dealing with each other it's just yeah they can be harsh man kids can be fucking harsh yes so i don't think the you know there's any argument there you know, there are, it, it's the whole Lord of the Flies thing, isn't it? Um, okay. Yeah, I think there's, um, I think it's fairly accurate. Okay. Jim? No, I go along with Darren. I mean, it's kind of, I had my run-ins with various bullies. Mm. Um, I didn't have it the worst, didn't have it the best either. But you know what I mean? Mm. It's kind of... It is a fact of life for kids. And American high schools seem, seem to be a lot more feral. <laughs> um, mm. they're, a, they're a lot more, I don't know. I think there's less sort of discipline <laughs> than in British schools <laughs> mm. uh, to a certain extent. I mean, I think in British schools, we, we have to wear uniform, which just means you are identifiable as be, at least belonging to that school. Mm. And very, ne'er, some ne'er-do-wells... You know, that was their downfall, fucking around and being spotted in the school uniform and reported to the school, and then that's mm. how they get caught. If you don't have school uniforms, you're an anonymous kid. You can get away with a lot more. Mm. Um, but I know, I mean, think that there's, you know, very much two schools of thought on those school stories. There's the kind of the jolly hockey sticks. Hey, hey, isn't it cool? We all, you know, we all go surfing mm. and drive hot rods, even though we're all 14, kind of American 
bullshit. Yeah. Or say the, the British eating a blight and lashing to ginger beer, isn't it great mm. being a kid? <laughs> but mm. for a lot of other people, it's kind of school. I mean, I consider my school to be, you know, whenever comprehensive, I've got, I've got a five year sentence here. Mm. It's big, it's impersonal. The teachers aren't really that interested in keeping discipline. A lot of these kids, they can't discipline because they're fucking psychotic. And, you know, you try yeah. and keep your head down and not get the shit kicked out of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's one of the reasons sort of Stephen King and Joe Hill are popular authors. Because, you know, they don't they don't varnish <laughs> childhood. Mm. They're very good at writing about childhood and capturing the magic. But they also sort of, you know, capture the reality of, uh, of childhood. I mean, you know, it's kind of... To a kid, a school bunny bully is kind of the equivalent of a hurricane. It's one of those random things that sweep into your life and fuck you up. Yeah, and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Yeah. It's I, just like a law of nature. This is what happens to kids. Bigger kids hmm. pick on you. And you, you hope they're not ones not heading your way. <laughs> I've got to ask, just to hmm. kind of, you know, follow on from this point. Um, hmm. Am I the only one who when it comes to school reunions really doesn't have any kind of skin in the game as in uh, it could go and fucking that sort of thing could disappear forever and it wouldn't matter a fucking jot because I went to one once and uh, I just looked around. It's like, there's only one person here that I'm actually happy to see and the rest Mm. of them can all go fuck themselves. I'm very much of that. I'm in touch with some people I went to school with, and all the rest can go fuck off and die. Yeah, yeah. Anybody I actually liked at school, I'm still in contact with, like you, Jim. Yeah, and that's it. The rest yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I I made a podcast with one, and I play hell divers with the other, and that's it. So, what about the people you like? I mean, do you still keep in contact with them from school? Or? No, I, I <laughs> fucking hate everyone. I'm, 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 I'm what's co- I'm what's commonly known as a nihilist and, I, and a misanthrope. And do you know what? You guys are the closest to friends I've got. So there you go. That yeah, says it all. That's, if a man, that's, whoa, whoa, that's stretching it. That if, really a man, if, a, if a man can be judged by this quality of his friends, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no. I was going to say my 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 school. I I go back to um, my school experience. I go back to uh, the quote from um, from one Malcolm uh, Tucker Esquire, who says it was like Shawshank Redemption: a hundred yards of crawling through shit and no fucking redemption. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Elton? What do you think of it? Think of that side of things. Um. Well, I suppose if you're being bullied then you're you're always worried about that sort of thing happening it, it's always mm. you're always on tenterhooks as to mm. is today another day of being bullied and mm. more than likely if you are being bullied severely then yes that is another day of you being bullied mm. severely it's just mm. it's a horrible situation to be in um mm. i think it's portrayed quite well Mm. Well, I I think sometimes it is really hard to get that across as well Mm. because you have it's so trite the way that it is done Mm. but it's done exactly the same way in every other kind of material Mm. and film and TV show that we've seen Mm. and normally it's never have I ever seen someone come in and go right okay um you leave him alone otherwise i'll beat you up yeah you know, that that's mm. never happened as, as far yeah. as i'm aware mm. and that's you know I, 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 i've got my history I, I was a bit of a shit at school sometimes and i was fucking beaten up sometimes as well so you know mm. i i kind of see both sides of things okay um, well, yeah, I was a fucking little shit, weren't I? So there you go. Oh, well, well there you go. You live and yeah. learn, and you you turn out. Oh yeah, I am a bit of a little bastard, aren't I? So <laughs> yeah, nice. it's the people that don't realise that they're bastards. They're the ones you got to yeah. fucking worry about. The ones mm. who come back to you later and go, "Hello, mate." Yeah, no, right. fuck them. Yeah, yeah, fuck them. Well, well, one one of my school bullies 
um, uh, got got shot in the eye by a um, by a air air rifle uh, just sh- shortly after he he left school and shortly after we all left school. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I have I have many regrets. My biggest regret was I wasn't the one pulling that fucking trigger. I thought yeah. you were going to say my biggest regret is it wasn't loaded with real bullets. Yeah, my, um, my biggest my biggest regret it was they didn't aim for his testicles instead of his eye. But there you go. the bollocks, Tim. Um, well, like I say, no hard feelings. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, okay, no, it's just it was just one of those things. I, I whenever I see whenever I see a sort of uh, sort of American, in, you know, especially Stephen King and especially, you know, that sort of era of stuff and it goes to 70s, it's like immediately you know because you've got drunk dads and everyone's getting beaten up at school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but getting round to the, to the finale, I said there was two parts to that finale. The kid, you know, the sister going in and going, I had dream, blah, blah, blah. And everyone going, right, mobilise mobilize the kids seen something in a dream but the other thing i was going to say was the the actual the heath robinson sort of like home alone thing at the end how did we all feel about that i thought it was quite logical actually Mm. it was almost like um Mm. it's a bit like karate kid you know where mr miyagi's teaching him to wax on wax off and like do this thing here and he's teaching mm. about housework but actually it's a mm. whole you know training him to do a whole bunch of fucking kung fu moves right mm. this was the same way every single aspect every single section that he'd been taught about actually was put together to make the big trap in the end right yeah he'd been making little parts of a rifle when he didn't know it you know um <laughs> mm. so yeah and every single bit was used, mm. and it's like the fa- it's very much a representation of the phone call at the very end. It's for you, and then it's mm. everything. <laughs> those those final phrases that the kids have said to Finn made up one mm. sentence. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit like that. I thought that the the trap was the same way as. That final phone, that final phone conversation. All oh, right, cool. And that was the bit where I was saying, "Hit him until." I found myself sitting there going, "Hit him until there's a fucking wet sound." Yep. <laughs> and I've said that a few times. I'm getting really worried about myself. I find that in those sort of films where you've got a real mm. twat, and you know, finally gets his his fucking beatings, and it's, mm. it's like, keep hitting him. No, keep it. Don't let him get up. Put him down. Put him down. <laughs> and it's, uh, oh, that was me as he, as he started hitting him with the phone. Mm. So keep hitting him. Hit him mm. again. Hit him yep. again. Yep. Don't Definitely. just destroy him. Fucking obliterate him. Just do yeah. it. Yeah, there is. Oh, well. man. Yeah. Mm. And I'm off to see the therapist next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think there's something wrong. Yeah, how's yeah? How's your anger management issues there? Um. Anyway, uh, what about you? What about you, Elton? What did you think about the Home Alone finale? I didn't quite get it. Um. Okay, so the grill came from the window, and mm. he and and the grabber didn't notice that the grill had gone at any he wasn't point. Foc- no, yeah. but he wasn't focusing on that and. And often the the room was dark because you knew he had to turn the lights on to come down the stairs. Yeah, that's was... yeah, that's very true as well. Mm. I quite like the way that he got the grill though, by mm. rolling up the um the carpet. the match oh the carpet and then sending the rope up that. That was very clever. I thought that was a very mm. good way of doing it. Uh, mm. The rest of it, I, I don't mind. I, I think <laughs> finding yourself in a fridge that's locked. Okay, fine. You've just dug mm. a big hole through the wall. Why not go about two foot to the left and try again? <laughs> and then you won't be in a fucking fridge. <laughs> well, how, how big? Hey, I suppose how big the fridge? But you know, what, what's on the other side of that that bit? Because you knew the you knew the kid kids were saying things like, 
you know, go through the, there's a fridge on the other side. Yeah. It, but, it's just the way that he cut a square hole. It's like, <laughs> really? was he really worried about the right angles that he was projecting there? I don't think he was. I've, I've said the, the other kid, the, the bully kid had done that and then he'd repaired it. That's where the hole was square. And that's why he dug there. Cause that bit was weak. Ah, it was Ooh. weak. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, see, that's why you need to watch it twice. Because <laughs> I didn't pick up on that. Now, now you've said it, I'm like, oh yeah. Who yeah. repaired it? What the kid repaired it? No, 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 no. The grabber repaired. Oh, it. the I grabber repaired the kid. It. And he, that's what got the kid killed when he found he'd been tunneling through the fucking walls. Yeah. But the metal the... guy said, "Oh, you should. I don't major repair work needed, dude." Yeah, that's right. But yeah, yeah that's... he spent. Yeah, it cost him a it cost him a fortune to repair it, didn't that's what he yeah. did, wasn't it? See, like I think that's what I like about the grabber, that he needed the kids to play the game kind of a, a, as a little barrier as is as, as if he had been forced into killing them. There was a reason mm. to kill them. If they don't play the game, if they don't try to escape, then he's got no reason to hurt them. Mm. They can just stay down there. Or, but if they try to tunnel through, if they try to escape, if they try to run, if they try to creep through, then it gives him the uh, the the excuse permission. to kind of unleash how yeah permission to un- unleash how on the kids. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It all had to go by a certain set of rules, didn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Um. What about? You? Oh, sorry, but I, mm. I, I, I don't mind the contraption. Um, but mm. when I saw his ankle go like that, I've had my ankle go like that several oh. times playing football. I yeah. know what that feels like. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. that really makes. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a. Yeah. Oh, I know that feeling. I go yeah. all hot and sweaty when that sort of stuff happens. Yeah, it was. Ay, ay, ay. Mm. Ay. I just walk yeah. it off. Yeah, I felt my ankle swe- swelling. Nice. Ankle swinging, walk it off. Yeah. Yep. Mm, Do it. Yeah. No, I, I that's the, I had that feeling when I I went ice skating once and that's the only time I went ice skating and I ended up in A and E for four hours. <laughs> but uh who did you kill? Oh I, I didn't. I went on my hands and knee I I fell over, twisting my ankle and I think I busted it. Busted my ankle in the in the um in the stiff shoes that were supposed to hold my ankle still. And then I sort of crawled on my hands and knees across the ice to get back out while everyone's kind of in front of me. What well, wasn't in Gillingham, was it? No, it was in it was in um, Chelmsford. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I've been there. Yes, yes. So there you go. Um, anyway, but <laughs> my foot aside, uh, Jim, <laughs> did you did how did you feel about the Home Alone finale? Well, I like this. It was kind of you've got like. Mm. All the kids have sort of got a part mm. of the escape plan, mm. but none of them had the time to put it all together. Yeah, and he, he was kind of like the. Uh, it all came together to him because he could like unite them and draw on everything mm. they tried, and put mm. all those pieces together. And it's kind of like, oh, that's so satisfying, <laughs> like Captain yeah. Planet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like like Voltron. <laughs> so, do you think all the other kids were able to speak to the the previously killed kid? No, I don't think so. Go on, sorry, Jim. Go on. I'm not sure. Actually, that's a good question. I mean, um, I think probably not uh, mm. because they all try some different things. But it's only when they're all sort of dead and in limbo they all realized we've got actually if we put these stuff together mm. this stacks up into a really good escape plan cool <laughs> hmm yeah i i was gonna say i think the same thing i mean darren and this you do you think anything different mate well, very much what i said earlier about you mm. know that it's it's building the gun and you're not realizing it it's the mr miyagi um doing you know, chores and realizing then he's actually yeah. taught you how to fucking fight. You know, it's mm. all coming together mm. and you don't see it. You just, you just, as you're listening to it, it's just, you're treating them as singular things. Mm. And in the end, you realize that everything fits together like a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, 
it's it's just interesting because I because part of me was sitting there going, oh, that's pretty clever. All these bits have come together and all made you know all worked, you know, yeah. and you know ah, oh, so he tried the hole. This guy tried the good grill. This kid tried the rope. This guy, yeah, you know, the kid, yeah. this kid, yeah, you know, and it was just like, ah, oh, it's got that kind of lovely clockwork vibe to it that you sort of see all these pieces, you don't see what it makes, and then yeah. all of a sudden you go, ah, I see. The only thing I was gonna say was, it felt, while it felt satisfying, it also had a certain haphazard nature to it, which made me suddenly go, ah, hang on. So did he? Did the kid and the the ghost really sort it all out, or was it just luck that he threw the grill down the hole? You know, there was there a plan to it, and I just part of my brain couldn't get round that bit. But overall, it did, by that by the time I sort of stood there thinking about that, I was thinking, no, fill that fill that that phone full of dirt. And hit him again. No, well, again. <laughs> look at the way that he took him out as well. Obviously, he was smacking the shit out of him. But then mm. he wrapped the rope around the grabber's throat and mm. then did the... Was it the move that one of the kids did earlier on? Mm. Yeah. The slinging them, that's what, yeah, slinging them over the shoulder. It wasn't yeah. his sister did that. Yeah. When she mm. was fighting the bullies. Oh, was it his sister? Mm-hmm. Did that whole thing of throwing them over his shoulder? Yeah. Oh no, no, it was no, no, it was no, the, it's um, at the beginning. The toughest, Robin, Robin, yeah, little yeah, kid. Robin does it, yeah, yeah. That's it, toughest kid in the school, yeah, mm. yeah. No, I, I, but I, I mean, come on, let's be honest. Before we, before we wrap this up, how cathartic was that? That whacking. I mean, we know Darren's <laughs> obviously got certain, <laughs> certain, certain uh, level of uh, uh, skill in the game with this one, but. But Jim Elton, no, it's just it's hugely satisfying. It's kind of, um, as I believe the Buddha said, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as he as he got in as he got in that big panel van with the red stripe down the side. Yeah, um, I think the the whole thing of him at the end as well, when he walks into school and those three kids that were bullying him. Like they yeah. hear he strangled a, a an adult <laughs> and killed him with his own fucking bare hands, yeah, and they can see it in his eyes as well. And you see him just kind of they don't make any comment; they just stare at him. Back the fuck up, yeah, yeah, indeed. Mm. Yeah, what did you think of it, Elton? The cathartic whack. Were you were you down for that? Or yeah, like, I was all over that. That was great. Yeah, that was wasn't it? Just. Just running up again and just hit him again and oh, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It it there there was like a, a, some sort of timing going on as well. He had a flow going on, mm. and then his rhythm was put out of place, and the grabber kind of grabbed him again. Mm. And he thought, uh, oh, this is going to go a bit wrong here, but no, it was it was very satisfying. Have you mm. ever seen that um, that comedy extra on the Mission Impossible Two disc? With um, Ben Stiller pretending to be Tom Cruise's stuntman. Oh yeah, and it's John Woo is there as well. He's doing an interview, and they're, mm. they're doing a scene where he's Ben Stiller's getting hit hard in the face, and so like you know, I think he's going hit him again harder, harder, yeah, yeah. Harder. harder, harder, hit him harder, <laughs> <laughs> do it again. I often think of that when I see <laughs> things like this. Hit him harder. Hit him. Because mm. the because the one thing I was going to say was the cathartic sort of beating him down like a fucking Cherokee drum was so good that that was the bit where I retrospectively reevaluated the whole movie because mm. it because it suddenly makes you realise how much you've invested in it enough to suddenly have the villain getting the punch down yeah yeah actually it means to you. And not only that, but it shows how good an actor that bloody Ethan Hawke is. Because whenever you see him, you always just think, "Oh, you know, it's Ethan Hawke." You know, <laughs> he's, you know, he's 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 one of those guys who turns up and you think, "Yeah, he's he's cool," but he's no bad guy, is he? And then all of a sudden, like when you finally see him as a bad guy, you go, "Oh, actually, hang on, yeah, oh, yeah. he's pretty um, good. He's pretty darn good." So I thought, I thought the pure catharsis of that made me just go. 
okay, fine. You know what? Maybe I'm being overcritical on this movie and reevaluate it. Mm, exactly. Because I tell you what, the last time I was that kind of up on the up on the edge of my seat going, Go on, <laughs> fucking do it was um was um oh god, what was it? The uh, the bloody Battlestar Galactica episode with the um with the, the when the Galactica's been pummeled after everyone's escaped from New Caprica and oh, the ship and, and then it the, just the thingy appears out of nowhere, doesn't it? Yeah, um, the pig, Pegasus. yeah, the Pegasus. Yeah, right. as 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 the Galactica's falling away and all the music goes quiet, and then you just see that one missile go, mm-hmm. and then the old Barry Crewy drums fire up, yep. and I was just like, "Fucking come on!" It was me and me and Jess both like up on the sofas going, "Fucking do it!" And fucking that was like like shot of adrenaline straight through my veins and this was exactly the same i sat there going fucking just 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 do it again i know he's dead but just do it again just, just, just do it again <laughs> <Just> make sure <laughs> yeah look the, <laughs> the fucking the fucking phone is now no it's just a speaker with some mud around it but just do it again <laughs> you can never be too sure do you know what i think there's mm. nothing more satisfying to me when you see mm. something like this, it's the look of fear in the bad guy's eyes, right? Mm. I hate watching these things where they're all cocky, even right up until they take their last breath, and it's like none of this has had an effect on them. This has been totally pointless as a beatdown. You know, mm. this is it. They, they're not getting it. You know, it's a bit like the Joker and Batman. It's just like there's there's mm. no way you're you know, you're making them regret their life choices. Whereas this one, you just see it in one fucking, when the mask comes off and then he starts hitting him, mm. it's like, yep, every single wrong choice he's ever made is suddenly flashing up before his eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. And now we will have a short intermission. <laughs> it's like a thing in the crow and it's like, here's the pain of all the people you've tortured. Fucking have some. Mm. It yeah, is. the crow. There ain't no coming back. There ain't no coming back. It's like fucking good shit. <laughs> yeah. So for there, that that just was ni- the nice little sprinkles on the top of mm. the cake there. That really was just that. Mm. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Right. Mm. Go on, Nelton. Sorry, I was that? just going about the, the the family aspect as well. Um, mm-hmm. y- you have the brother and sister getting along really, really well and helping each other out, and then you have mm. the two brothers mm. who kind of aren't on the same page whatsoever. It actually completely different kind of page. Because <laughs> you've got a got yeah. a brother who's coked off of his head, kind of mm. working out who's where this killer should be. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have a fucking clue. <laughs> yeah, that did make me laugh actually. <laughs> Sitting there snort, snorting it up and all of a sudden there's a moment of realization of sort of the you could hear literally hear the petty drop. Yeah. As he looks around, yeah, no, it was quite. That was quite funny, and it's also doubly funny because I'd only just finished watching the third season of Bosch, and that actor was was a dirty cop. Oh, got, okay. So, so it's kind of like, yeah, so it's like watching him again, but this time he gets a fucking axe in the head. <laughs> By the way, can I just also say, as just an aside, who thought he was going to get absolutely clobbered by the kid when he opened the door? Um, I was the I, first time I did thinking, oh, yeah. fucking, you're going to get it, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, they're going to get the wrong guy. You're going to get the wrong guy. Oh, what, the brother? Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Did, uh, cool. Did anybody mm. else think that maybe this could have been a shorter film as well? As in, maybe if the kid had stood behind the door as it opened, Ethan Hawke's character comes in, he runs around, closes the door behind him because there's no way to get the door open. So, trapping mm. down in the basement, fuck off. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I was going to say, just close the fucking door on his arm. Mm. As he's closing it, closing it on his fingers, he's like, I'm going to go upstairs now. And the door slowly closes, and you just kick it shut. Yep. What's fuck that, it out! What's that thing from Starship Troopers? You can't push a button if you've got a knife through your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Medic! Well, <laughs> Master Sergeant Zim, yeah, always, always one with the uh, live the, the... fire exercise. <laughs> okay, everyone, <laughs> line it up. 
Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, has anyone got anything additional they'd like to add before we wrap it up? Anything? No, I think that's improved. Um, speaking about it has definitely helped. Okay, mm. that's cool. I feel I feel like we've we've done a bit of therapy for you yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it always oh, works. Uh, yeah, and does anyone want to just just flag the uh, the elephant in the room with the whole it references <laughs> when the kid when the sister's going down in the rain in a yellow yeah in right. a yellow mac looking for a villain who's got balloons. <laughs> who steals children and I, and then yeah can't see it myself <laughs> in oh, Derry in sure? Derry, Maine yeah. I don't know it's weird isn't it yeah it's so, just a coincidence somewhere <laughs> yeah yeah I, I couldn't couldn't possibly comment um right so if nobody's got anything else to to um add I think we'll we'll wrap it up there but um, I think it's safe to say that it was a it was a very good film that retroactively got better the more you yeah. more you sort of think about it, and also the more you appreciate that ending because mm. a film is a bad guy a horror film is only as good as its bad guy, and I think once you knew you wanted to punch the fuck oh, out of him man. with a telephone, then yeah, I think it's done its job. Yeah, there wasn't too much of it either, was there? No, nah, there wasn't. No, no, there wasn't. But um, anyway, there's a whole thing about Blumhouse movies I could talk about for another hour, but I will not because it is now 20 past 12 oh, and it's fucking hellfire. It's late. Yep. So we'll wrap this up nice and quick now. So um, let's just leave it there. If you want to send any feedback in, by all means do so. Send the emails in to feedback at blackdogpodcast.com or join us on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast and leave a bit of feedback there under the episode. Right. Now it's time to tell everyone about our next film. Um, our next film, um, Jim's not around next week. How are you, sir? No, I'm away for a little holiday in the countryside well deserved i'm sure and yes it's all cool and so because of that we didn't want jim to pick a film because it's his turn and then not be around for it in case he pulled the gi joker pin and we didn't <laughs> we didn't want that thing <laughs> just just <laughs> it's it's the it's the old ta- thomas the tank engine mean with him coming away and just listening to the screams of his enemies as he flies away um <laughs> uh, so 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 no we did we took that we took that pin away from him <laughs> and we all collectively uh came up with the film that we would watch in jim's absence while you know and jim didn't have to pick so he could pick next week and we came up with the creator the creator is on Disney, uh, Plus. Disney Plus. Disney Plus. And uh, yes, would be an interesting film to watch, especially in this ever ever emerging AI world. Mm. Be interesting to have a little chat about that. Have you or anyone else here seen the uh, creator, Darren? Uh, no, I've not seen it at all. Elton? No, I haven't, no. Okay, are either of you looking forward to seeing it? Yep. Cool. Elton? Uh, yeah, I am. Okay. Jim, have you seen it? I've not, no. But I will be no. watching it. I'm quite intrigued. Uh, Okie dokie. I have seen it. It was the. I, I see it. I did done see it at the cinema. Really, the cinema. The cinema or the cinema? No, <laughs> not the cinema, cinema equidistant. Not world. cinema equidistant, no. A real cinema. <laughs> not cinema equidistant, no. Oh, it's did, Gareth um, Edwards. Yeah, Gareth Edwards. Oh, who, okay. who can? Yeah, uh, trust me, Elton. Don't don't go like that. No, I no, think, no. Give, no. It, give it. I think I think if you're judging it by his Godzilla movie and and from Rogue One, then you might be on a bit of a loser. It's not quite the same as them. Um. So there you go. So we will be reviewing the creator. Um, and oh, by the way, we got to come up with. We have to come up with a a a, a phrase because everyone's got this far. What do we do <laughs> as a phrase? Um, how about hit him until there's a wet sound? Hit him until <laughs> there's a wet sound. Yeah, and then hit him some more. Yeah. There you go. Hit, 
hit him until there's a wet sound, then hit him some more. That's our that's our phrase that pays this week. Um, so that's that. And finally, we got to go over to Pimp's Corner and find out what's happening over at hypnagoria.com, apart from a nice holiday next week. Jim. <laughs> Uh, yes, this week I've just uh, dropped a reading of a Richard Matheson short story, his first mm-hmm. ever story, which is really mm-hmm. good. It is. Uh, just come out today as a commentary club where um, I drank too much and we watched two old episodes of Top of the Pops. And at the weekend, <laughs> uh, there's part three of the Roger Corman retrospective, which is the last part, until mm. the week after when there's part four. Yes. Which is definitely <laughs> the last part, because I know I just recorded it. But oh, right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> mm. Okie dokie. Right. So, and you're not gonna do you're not gonna do a commentary club on on his Fantastic Four movie, are you? Uh no, but we have recorded one coming out next week on The Terror. Oh. Which uh was directed by Roger Corman, Jack Hill, Monty Hellman, Francis Ford Coppola, and Jack Nicholson. No, all taking but, turns. And Uncle <laughs> Tom Cobbley and all. Yeah, all right, pretty okay. man. Yep. Cool. Okay. That's quite something. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I think that I think a, a range of visual styles and tones. I would imagine that that is um, cool. Okay, and that's all over at hypnagoria dot com. Yeah? indeed. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And what about you, Elton? What's happening in Rogue Two? Uh, well, I'm talking about cars going around in circles on the Grand Prix podcast, and mm-hmm. um, about seven years ago, myself and Andy. Uh, took part in uh well we we covered band of brothers yes. and the reception was muted shall we say because mm. we we don't think we did the the episodes justice we went on far too long and uh longer than short of it we're doing it all over again because it is the right. 80th anniversary of d-day on thursday and we have recorded uh, the Saving Private Ryan, and we're going to be going back through Band of Brothers and possibly onto the Pacific and you know, other things after that. So uh, cool. if you want to go listen to that, that's on the Band of Brothers podcast or RoadToMedia.com. Nice. Okie dokie. That's really cool. Well, that'd be good to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, brilliant. Okay. Oh, by the way, is Band of Brothers actually available anywhere on streaming? No, HBO, uh, which well, I don't think we have in this channel in this country, no. but Sky. And okay, yeah, cool. brilliant. All right then. Well, that's that. So, Darren, have you got anything to promote? Uh, no. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> in which case, that's a good place to end it. So. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Elton. No problem. Cool. And have a have a good holiday, Jim. And I will do. Yeah. And we'll, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you all next week for the Creator. Until then, take care. Tatty, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Finish the show. It is finished. <laughs>